Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to No Crits Given. Welcome back to Dead Fire and New Dawn, episode five. 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 Leave them hanging. Can we just leave that there? <laughs> freeze frame. Sorry. I'll oh, I'm not going to freeze frame it. He can sit there with his arm. <laughs> Sorry, I've suddenly got to go after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of our campaign, guys. everybody. <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for joining us again for the next episode of our pirate adventure. My name is Ben. I'm your DM. And joining me, as always, around the table, quick fire, Josh Haynes. Hello. Lou Jackson. Hi. Right. Lloyd Curtis. High five. Yeah, oh. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Doherty. <laughs> And Joe Smith. <laughs> <laughs> last week in our, oh, sorry, last episode, we discovered a heck of a lot about our characters as they got ready to spend the day back home in Rockcliffe Bay. They all went their separate ways to deal with their errands and their jobs about the day. And it was an exciting one. Cold spent, Cold went back to a, a, an associate he had met previously to buy some fruit and veg. And a fishing rod, which she didn't have. And then just proceeded to destroy a kitchen in an attempt to, to help the owner of the Dwarvish Lion serve food to lunch, uh, the lunchtime rush. Managed to get himself some new chef's tools. You know, and an official kitchen knife. And with my initials on With your initials on the side. Um, kitchen sword, sorry, not kitchen knife, otherwise that wouldn't have been your initials. Matrin went to blow off some steam at the fighting pit, at Gim's <laughs> fight pit, and loaded us up his arms and got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> straight up. Just straight up, one punch to the foot. Have you all seen that video of the cocky fighter doing the backflips and then the guy just cleans him out? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I imagine that was. Yeah. <laughs> just, he's there doing all the Caporia bit, it's like, bang! That's what happened to Matrin, yeah. but it did send him on a path of self-reflection as he would decide that later on he wanted to try and make amends with Cole by taking him out for dinner. <laughs> that was quite a, quite a scene, you need to go back and watch that. <laughs> Typhus went to visit an old uh, colleague, a old friend of his called Mother Idol, where he goes to procure his magical pieces, his magical items and maps and scrolls and share the tale of his first night at sea, which Mother Idol deemed well enough to equi- uh, grant him uh, an object called Gim, not Gim's Fight Pit, that's a place. Kinran's Aquadex, a, uh, a device with that him identify creatures. We discovered that Chiron has been almost leading a double life as he is severely in debt to the most cutthroat badass pirate on the island and has been acting as her spy amongst the ship. However, he did confess all of this to the captain and they seem to be wanting to work together going forward to try and get Curran out of his debt. And Zozo himself ran into an old friend who informed him that life on the island isn't as nice and as happy as it may seem on the outside. Captain Calroon, an old colleague of his, took him for a drink. Mm. Introduced him, or pointed out a man called Captain Alexander who was what a major player in a company called the Obsidian Federation. After that, we then jumped back to Cold and Matrin having dinner, which went about as well as we all <laughs> thought it was, <laughs> which led to Cold leaving Matrin and walking out of the pub or the tavern and then returning to him when he was asleep. And say we ended last time with the words, you deserve to die. With cold towering over a sleeping What's mattress. Dying? Oh, dying! <laughs> no, they just wanted another dinner. It was dying. <laughs> we are we going. We need to work on Cole's pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, that, that's the thing we need to work on is Cole's pronunciation. <laughs> so we are going to pick up straight back up where we left off. It is well into the night time, 10, 11 o'clock. Typhus was the only other person that wasn't asleep. He is down by the sea reading where he is most comfortable. Um, Chiron was asleep in his tent. Captain Zobo Zobo was asleep in his tent. Matrim was asleep in his tent. And Cold had snuck in. Uh, uh, Cold, it's quite fitting that we pick up straight away from where yeah, yeah, it was yeah. left. So, um, dun, dun. it's just you, 
Um, they don't rubber. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I always imagine it's quite a thick sword. So. It is, but it's about a foot wide. No, it's one of them um, 30 centimetre rulers you play with Sky. Houston. You deserve to die. And then, uh, because your sword's out, so it's all, um, you know, lava and cracking and stuff, and then you just see uh, tears stream down his face like it's the last session, and they turn into, uh, like, lava streams. And then his whole skin hardens into, like, black, hardened rock, and you just hear it solidifying. And uh, he's going to throw a punch at you while raging. Oh! <laughs> Knocks him out in one hit. Please get knocked out again. Flashback to the arena. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that is a... Shit. Uh, please don't miss. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh... Six. <laughs> <coughs> it doesn't hit. So as you punch him, you, I think because of the tears and the way you are, you might your vision might just be slightly skewed. Yeah, yeah. So you just go to punch him, like just miss him, hit the... Yeah, the sort of bed next to sword. It. Bang! <laughs> because because it's all like solidified and stuff. His like, his face is like stuck in such as morph. You know, like a like a tragedy mask. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. His face is just stuck like that. He can't move. It's just like it's just infinite sadness. You do have movement if you would like to move away. I, I think you raised his bonus action, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got movement if you want to move now. Move away. Oh. Probably not. Um. So. Do you want to? Do you want to see if you can wake up? You can. I know it's a surprise round, but because you guys are asleep, you can see if you can wake up. It's Typhus first. Typhus is. Draw, see if I notice. Yes. I'm going to go with an eight, not good enough to notice from as far away as I am. <laughs> no, not not with a punch to the mattress. You can't. Uh, <laughs> Zozo. Cool. So uh, what can... do you want? Perception, sorry. Yes, please. Nice. Uh, that's a dirty 24. You wake up at the end of your turn. Yeah. So you are aware that something is happening in Matrin's tent. Not exactly what, but there is commotion going off in Matrin's tent. Uh, that brings us to... Cold. Uh, no, because we had the surprise for oh, right, and he's yeah. at the end of initiative. Yeah, so. I'll go for the punch. <laughs> I get two attacks. You do. Do you want to roll your second, your second one for me first? But that might be just with my sword. I think it's just with my sword. Okay. Yeah. Two attacks. Yeah. No worries. Um, it just says two attacks per action. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. because you're a... You're uh, a higher level barbarian than me. I'm a barbarian. I'm a, it's due to a packed feature that gets attacked twice with my sword. Uh, natural 19. It's... Well, your damage? Uh, it's one plus strength modifier, isn't it? So, three. Take three points of damage. <laughs> I love it. Um, after cold is Matri. Matri, you're. Two damage for rage? No, it's a little strength weapon. Yeah, it's just an armor strike. Oh, bonus action! Can I punch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can I do a D? We haven't heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, natural four. No. No. So you go down for the one two hit the first one because the way you hit the first one. I know. One hand is on the sword, so I'm just. Oh, like, you just. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Ghostly, ghostly, ghostly. Um, <laughs> Matrin, you are now rudely awoken. I've just taken a blow to the face. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> like, I'm gonna wipe off the sand like, that's been flying around because of cold. I'm gonna stand up. I can do that. Okay. I'm then gonna rage myself. Go into a rage. Oh, that's Just out of point of curiosity, what does it look like when Matrin goes into a rage? Like, so he's kind of like perfectly skin, yeah, and like it just goes to such deep purple, like near black, really kind of colour, like yeah. just pure like muscle works. Yeah, like you entire, your whole like because you're topless, your yeah, entire like chest and everything. Everything just goes purple. really dark purple, and like you just see this pure anger, and like and his eyes just. No, no, when you see it in my films, it's sort of just goes to that pure tunnel vision and anger. But like nice. that is purely what it happens when he's in. Nice, kind of I like that. Um, so obviously, I've taken a hit, so I'm going to swing back with an unarmed strike. 
Twenty-one. Yep. That's four. Uh, so it reduces two. Because you're just raging at each other. Because I'm multi-class. Um, and then I'm gonna follow on strike again because I get two action, two attacks per action. Natural twenty. <laughs> it hits. It definitely hits. Um, <laughs> double damage. But then half it because yeah, yeah. yeah. So four. Jesus Christ. And then I was gonna use my bonus action because I raged, raged. You did. So, you did a rage. <laughs> you can't move. I can't no, imagine you getting. No, but yeah, <laughs> you can we, move. Well, I think we're up into a rage battle right now. Rage battle. I imagine it is our equivalent of that for early episode of Pokemon when it's like Kakuna versus Metapass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just these guys getting angry at each other. Um, yeah, I think that's what Cole has done. Yeah? He has, hey. he has used hard and that's why he's taken off. Kyron, instead of rolling, you find yourself. Get that. Get that to now you find yourself up, sort of, on your own, like on the top of like a, a cliff, a cliff face. So I know like the, the top of Rock Cliff is like on the beach, but it does like come round the island and that. And you, it's like the wind is it's, it's pitch black. There's like the light from the city is quite a while away. You feel the wind sort of whipping round you in the dead of night as you sort of approach the edge of this cliff and look over it onto the open sea. You can just about make out the port and the and the, the new dawn. Um, what would you like to do at the top of this cliff? Um, well, with what's been happening, um, obviously find out uh, somebody cares about has been taken by Captain Ralphina is a pretty... Uh, What's the word? Understandably pissed off. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> now uh, a little bit of uh, thinking about Chiron is he's not a religious. He's he's not a believer. Mm -hmm. But um, in his frustrations, not seeing any possible route he could take that would get him to where he needs to be, just out of sheer frustration, he starts yelling into the sky. On, while standing on the cliff and looking like the sea and stuff screaming up at the sky basically giving both barrels to the gods yeah <laughs> it's going to be sort of like uh... oh, okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> no worries okay. take a minute it's going to be like um... now you know me I am not a believer I do not believe there is anything up there but if there is and if you deign to be real and want us to believe, no, I am here calling for help. And if any are listening, now is when it is needed. Um, give me a performance check. And performance. Ooh. I should have said <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll be the end of your turn. Which brings us to the top of round and back to Typhus. That is a tiny bit better. <laughs> it, it's only a 21. Only a 21. <laughs> <laughs> so as you look over, it's hey, sort of maybe... Legal. <laughs> More than legal. And cut. Um, <laughs> it's been a pleasure just bringing this to you. But as somebody said on Facebook the other day, the tone of our presentation makes them feel like one of us is going to be arrested for something. Isn't that? Someone, someone on Facebook, I put there, you know I wrote that PR thing, uh -huh. so I put that in one of the groups, and somebody was like, oh, I was reading this, and I expected it to be an apology for something one of them had done. <laughs> so I'm fucking, yeah, I'm just trying to get my name out of it. Um, yeah. So you sort of, as you're reading, you look up, and as you look up for a second, you do realise that there is a two, like, matron hanging told R, Seemingly very angry towards each other. Um, do I then get a full turn now, or do I? You can get a full turn now because you weren't asleep, so you weren't trying to wake up. You were just doing a pre perception check. Cool. In which case, uh, can I move within 60 feet of them? Within 60 feet? So you want to know 60 feet of them? Yes. 
So you want to move there? Yes. <clears throat> Whether or that takes my full... Uh, What's your movement? My movement is 30 feet, so that takes my full move and dash. Dash, I'm happy for that to be So like yeah, a... you can full dash to there. Yeah. Easy, because I think you're, you'll get to about there, I think, so you can dash to about there. Yeah, that's fine. And is uh, then um, I'm just going to um, shout loudly, Captain! And uh, that's the end of my turn. Did you? Yeah, you, you woke up before, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, no yeah. problem. That's the end of your turn. Eyemask has come off. Like, <laughs> 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 muffs, like, um, that does bring us to Zozo's stumbling turn. Up and, stumbling over himself as he tries to put some trousers on. CPAP machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but still in the full armour, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what the mask is. Yeah. So you are. Let's lock that in place. <clears throat> Here. And in the last turn, you did wake up. <laughs> What'd you like to do? Um, I'm assuming I've heard of disturbance within relative closeness to. My I think turn. I think we, I think you rolled quite high, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think you can tell, like you know, well that's Matron's tent, and the sound's <laughs> coming from Matron's tent. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go back into my sleeping position. Like <laughs> standard Matron. <laughs> Just gonna pop two more Nyquil. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a Horlicks and uh, I'll call it a night. Uh, now I'd like to. Uh, he's just shouted you as well, hasn't he? So he just. Yeah. For you. Um, but he's scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone shouted down to me. Zozo would like to leave his tent with his belt in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, Boy. I think that my last comment. Here's one we're apart from before. <laughs> so, um, am I right in thinking Zozo's in some sort of sleep where he's on? I'd like to think his armour's on, like, you know, the sort of mannequins that you get that you dress in your armour when you're not wearing Like an armour stand thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's in some sort of nightwear, but it, it, he's well aware that this noise has come from Matron's tent. So mm -hmm. as he walks, he's going to leave his tent quite quickly, but pick up one of his uh, swords and yeah. leaves. Well, how much movement you got? I think it's just the standard, isn't it? There, yeah, standard 30. About there. Oh, cool. you. Yeah, so you can now directly see them and see what's going on. So you have got bonus and action left. So we're technically in the tent, aren't we? But that you are is, technically in the that tent. tent has got to have some... Because we've no. both stood up now. Yeah. So we're going to see your face. You're both quite yeah, tall as well. Like, the size on the screen, like, it is quite a big tent because I have quite like, a big guy. All my armour's on there. <laughs> no, I, just didn't I like to think like, there's a light behind there. You're doing that with Austin Powers thing. Yeah, because my, mini... <laughs> my arm here, uh, there's like fists like going, yeah, yeah, I see it. Uh, any action or bonus action from you, sir? Ooh, mm, mm. <laughs> well, oh, thank you, thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd be right in thinking mm. that my Drake companion's still around as well. Uh, yeah, you submitted in the last... Get, uh, the last episode. I don't see why it would. Is, is it on a time limit? Is it a? Is it just a companion you have? Can I pick uh, you on the ship for Dara? Yeah. I've got to do that. Yeah. I've got to get the stack block, block up for my companion. Take, uh, a, minute, uh, take uh, a minute and get it if you want. It. Essentially, it's there until it dies, and then, okay, you, then you'd yeah. use an so action like to resum it. Like a familiar. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Um, yeah. It remains until it's at zero hit points. It's all he's got his yeah. own little bed in the tent. He's <laughs> got a little dog, little dog basket. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Little Drake. Is basket. it like a Pegasus? It's no, like Pegasus from the Hercules yeah. film. Yeah. Hi. What initiative? What did you get? Your initiative? Mine. Yeah. Four. The oh. the Drake yeah. shares my initiative. Wait, the star got higher than me. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, so the Drake he's accompanies you. You're a star. Uh, yeah, Drake's on my shoulder. Um, I'm just grabbing the stat block very quickly. He did. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sat on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a serpenty type. Well, I've gone for Drake. Creature, isn't it? A Drake. A Drake is. It Drake's it. two legs, isn't it? No, it's a white one. It's a white one. Um, and a worm is no 
wings or legs. Reading through the W Y R. Reading through through it, it does say it is entirely up to your D to you, uh, the player in the DM's discretion how dragon like it looks. Oh, it looks like that green dragon on that screen there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't make it blue, no. no. If we had to fight this as the ice dragon the other week, you can have it as your blue dragon as well. Yeah, that's fine. We'll pretend it's. I can pretend. Hey, it's we good. pretended that some fucking shark for octopuses in episode two. So, I didn't. No, I'm not saying five episodes and I expected more. <laughs> <laughs> but I am disappointed. Right. Well, yeah, do, you want, do, you want, do you want the fucking dragon to do anything or not? <laughs> um, no, I think. Ugh. It'd almost be pointless. It's got extra movement than me, but I think it'd be pointless for it to do anything. Right. Um, I'm assuming I'm okay to shout. Yeah. Uh, so from that position, Captain Zozo stumbles out his tent, one sword in hand, straight next to him. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. <laughs> Don't get knocked out again. <laughs> that um, making me angry. <laughs> um, sword in hand, sees what's going on, sees it's cold and mattering. And almost isn't quite sure what he's seeing. Mm-hmm. So I've asked to just take a double blink. You know, he's, he's still yeah, quite recently right, woken yeah. up. Um, eventually notices what it is and we'll just go, ENOUGH! And that'll be. Um, Give me intimidation. Against. Intimidation! That's a 13 flat out. What, with, with modifiers? Yeah, it's, I've got 11 charisma, so it's zero on everything. What would you guys do? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm 13. 13. At the moment, I'm full rage, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, like, locked out. We're, completely, we're locked in. completely didn't know it. It's no problem. Speaking of which, we're back at Cole's turn. Uh, he is going to. Uh, do a backhand slice <laughs> with this. Four and a half foot sword. Steven Seagal style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> except not a poser. <laughs> it is a cool. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I was genuinely waiting for the 20 to come through there. Yeah, me too. Uh, that is a 11. No. So you expertly see it coming. You're the fighter here, remember? You expertly see it coming. Yeah, yeah. Slightly dodge out of <laughs> the way to duck it. It's, uh, it's going to lose momentum. Two hands back again for a oh, uh, seventeen. No, no. I'm eighteen. I'm a class. <laughs> so again, seeing it coming, you <laughs> lean out the way, proper dodging out the way of each one to avoid being attacked. I'm assuming you're not moving. Oh. No. Can't Come on, boys. Matrin. <laughs> Someone either finish this up or Matrin, um, your turn. Okay. As he swung at me, because. Like, I know I'm fully raged right now, but I would always engage in the same level of combat, like, as a, the way that I've always been is, I still have that respect, so I'll always engage in the same level of combat, so if someone goes fist, like, I'll fight back with fist. Mm-hmm. I, won't, I won't go beyond what they've done, but as soon as, like, this, like, staff has come, is it staff? The sword. The sword, the sword, the sword has come at me, like, swinging, like, he's gone, well, Flail's coming out, guys. <laughs> so he's got the flail going. I like that how he said, I fight at the same <laughs> level somebody else's. What about Luther? He the, wasn't fighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, say, you, you did this, you went, the flail's going like this. And Jack made me think of, made the scene from the IT crowd where the football match. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do this now? <laughs> Can I do it? They're having a laugh. They're having a laugh. No, they're having a laugh. Yeah, so. Go on, attack. Um, 18. Yeah. Or your damage. Cheesy peeps. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, cheesy peeps, man. 12. 12 points of damage reduced to 6. Um, and then I'll attack right. for a second turn on my, on my action. Yeah, 17, yeah. 5, 7. Not quite halfway. Um, on my bonus action, I'm going to go for a headbutt. <coughs> you can attack again with your weapon. 
I know, but like, I've, I've done like two with it. Now, not to put any pressure on this, but the last time he went for a headbutt, he missed it. And he, <laughs> and he was holding the man. So. <laughs> Uh, dirty 20. Yeah. It. So that would be a 4. So you take 2. That's um, 3 attacks. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Joss. It's tough. Today. It's tough. <laughs> 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 what would you like? Can I... After I've done the headbutt, so obviously I've hit him twice and then I've headbutted him. Can I just say, cold, stop, otherwise I can't stop myself. You do? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is, however, Dara's turn. Dara <laughs> is going to... For the eyes! <laughs> Dara is going to run round behind Matrim. Flanking him. Flanking him to nice. give me the health action to just bite at his heels and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so there's not no actual damage, but he's gonna go around to give you that and then give you the health action. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Kyron. Back at the top of the cliff, you call out to the gods, begging them for help. And on your previous roll, nothing happened. Do you like to roll again? <laughs> <laughs> I, I see a trend here. <laughs> Is there any modifiers? <laughs> uh, Can't Dara give in wait, that Wait, what am I going with? Because it's performance. Action. Performance. You are asking for their attention. Yes. You are performing for them. <laughs> Three again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, would you like to do anything else? <laughs> I'm just going to start fucking raging out at the top of this cliff. <laughs> Quite impotent rage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um... Nothing else to do. That is I'm just going to be time. picking rocks up and covering them everywhere. Just <laughs> <laughs> losing my like shit. A proper mutley. Typhus. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. Um, my action as I'm moving 60 feet to them is I'm going to cast a um, third level spell. Sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How old are you? Both kill. die. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> I am going to cast Hold Person on the pair of them. Brilliant. Do you cool. need to do anything for that? Uh, I don't. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom 15. Fuck. Uh, this is quite interesting. <laughs> Fuck. Because if one of them gets held and the other one doesn't, they're both. They're going to get a turn before he goes again. This is all Michael Crickle here as well. <laughs> What's this? So if one of you gets held, like one of you fails and the other one doesn't, the other one will basically get a free turn with an automatic critical hit. <laughs> Wisdom is my worst. <laughs> Wisdom my second worst. Yeah. What is it? What is it? 14. What was your, what's your DC? Fuck. Did you both fail? Yes. Yeah. So they're both now held in place until... Is it concentration? It's concentration and they uh, get to reward again at the end, end of, of their, their turn. next turn. Wow. Oh, that means we can lose rage. You will indeed. Is it? I've got another three. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I hope you didn't want anything else, guys, because this is the get. This is the episode. This is the entire episode. <laughs> uh, is it anything trouble? else from Ty first? <laughs> just just a knowing look to the cap- captain going. I get knocked down. We're not going to. So so. And again. And again. My turn. Okay. So. Is there an implication as to, as to how they're held? Are they suspended oh, above the floor? Yeah, or are they... I can say, so what happens is, I um, very much a, it appears like a bolt of electricity flies out of both of my hands and hits both of them, and they are sort of, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, and it's very much like that moment when, some, when you get hit and you suddenly freeze. Yeah, yeah like stasis. Kind yeah, of stasis. Yeah. So they suddenly freeze, but there's this um, light, Bluish, sort of like the same sort of dark blue as Typhus's skin, mm-hmm. um, constantly flowing around around them, like just a single block going around in a circle. Just like one point. Yeah, oh, haphazardly, awesome. cool. just just um, showing them in the um, standing <laughs> place. Can we can we say that we've locked in a rocky style freeze frame? <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> like we're right. like just gone for the head. Like we've gone, we've gone full <laughs> dead space and just stasis them. I assume that's what we were all thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the end of the campaign. So that's <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's you know, I'm wondering what Dara's doing. 
Dara's just coming there like, wait, what? Yeah, Dara yeah, didn't. I didn't freeze Dara. I, I couldn't freeze Dara anyway, it's a whole person. Oh, Your turn. <laughs> Um, I reckon crit. <laughs> I don't think you need a sack. My turn. It's you, yeah. <clears throat> Can I move within touching distance of both of them? Easy. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> 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 yeah, now that you've both been very naughty. Bang red steel. Here, smoke this pack of cigarettes. Tell me if you like them after you've finished this whole pack. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah, Drake's with me. Sorry. No, you are, mate. No, that's the entire thing. Is it Mark or? No. And for that, I think we might attack Matt <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to start putting up a warning at the start of these episodes for Matt Dream's joke. For Chris. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, Matt Dream's joke. <laughs> The next time you do one of those press releases, it is because of <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> something that he's done. So I just need to roll on oh, nice. <coughs> So you've walked up to them. I'm guessing even though you both held your very sentient in. No, they are just paralysed. Just paralysed. They just physically. They are can't completely move. conscious and aware. But they can't talk back. But they can't talk or move. They can't move or them. make anything until they've made and, a save. And if you make a hit on them, it is an instant crit. Tempted, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is. You know when Luke looks at you and he goes, and <laughs> it's a critical hit. <laughs> Just backhand the both. You know when I'm going really to get two kids in one? No. It's like that. I'm not going to be the guy slapping everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'd like to speak before I do anything. Yeah. Um, I, I envisage, it, envisage it in my head in a way that those of us speak, even though you're both paralysed, your eye. Your eyes can still move. They move and they dart around or they try to look uh, or try to listen. Things that you comprehend, your eyeballs still dart around. Your eyes reflect what your body can't. Mm -hmm. And Zozo stood in front of you both. Uh, still, he's got his sword now. Bearing in mind, he's not bearing his armour. He's having to physically hold it with one hand at his side. This is the first time everyone's seen Zozo's full no, face. Yeah, no one's picked up on it apart from <laughs> Jamie earlier. Ah, what's it like? <laughs> no, you're paralysed. <laughs> yeah, you're facing each other. Yeah. You're, you're both like, like, I need to see it. The captain looks like. What part of this is seen? Like, you are tunnel vision to each other. Yes. Tunnel vision, yeah. Come on. Um, so, he, you know, he's manually having to hold. Normally his swords are already held by his size, ready for like quick drills. Yeah. He's manually holding it now. Left hand holding the sword at his side. Yeah. Right hand on the hilt. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you both can hear me. I think it's time for this to stop. Matrin, I expect more from you after what we spoke about on the ship. You're supposed to look after this man. I asked you to dedicate your life for him for what you did. Cold. I cannot ease your pain. I cannot make it easier for you. And I will not pretend the man in front of you has overstepped the mark. But we are a crew. We are brothers. We have lost people on our journey and I am not willing to lose two of my best. So take what I say to heart and behave! And I would like to drop sort of sword on the floor with Matrin suspended in the air looking at where we are. Can I attempt to push him into his tent? Suspended. Well, we're in the tent, or are we going to say we're Let's say, it's, let's say it's, it's fallen out, yeah, for the ease of people watching at home. You can attempt to make a push attack. I'm assuming that's just a sure attack. Yeah, it's a sure, sure attack. Wouldn't. Would it not move them at all? Can they not be moved? Can they not be moved at all? I'm reading. Uh, it just says pat. Or if they can break for break. No. <laughs> We're just checking the thing. We will be taking uh, a break. No, after I mean, we finish this we bit. Take, will you cut this bit out? Oh, it just says the paralyzed. There you go. Whenever someone mentions me being knocked out, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. So keep, a note. keep a note. Keep a note. This is paralyzed. Yeah. yeah. It's a kind of machine. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It, um, then whatever state he falls into, then he's refrozen in that position. I'm assuming. Uh, or, I, the, way I, like the way I, the way I see it, that you are frozen in place, like that, then you're chip punching. Yeah. So he can move you, but you will then still move in. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, you can pose them. Pose them. Yeah. 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 Well, you could have them either side of your tent as decoration. <laughs> as as that means you've got to hold content safe decoration forever. Last <laughs> <laughs> a minute. Yeah. Only for a minute. I mean. Oh wait. You, and you get to make um, saving throws. Yeah, you get to make like to, As I'm saying, it's spilled out. Yeah. After Zozo's speech, um, I'm assuming there's no checks or anything like that that needs to take place. I think you just do an attack. And then if it, shove if attack. It, shove attack, and then if it, and if it uh, lands, you push him back. I'd like to push Matron into his tent, if possible. Yeah. And that is, uh, so shove attack is? Just strength, is it? I yeah. I believe, just a strength attack. Just strength. Which is an instant crit, because power power, so. So it will hit. So yeah. you will push him in. Mm -hmm. Double crit. Double crit. Um. How much damage will it take? So what is it? I don't doing? think you're, you're not attempting to damage him. Are you? you're no, so pushing I, him. If I can, just for sake of it, I like for it to be a non-lethal yeah. shove into the you, you push him, match him, you fall back, you sort of float awkwardly at a weird angle back into your tent. So would he be powerless and prone? Yes. Yeah, I think he's probably going to lie down and go to sleep anyway. So you fall prone. In the air. And so I've got nothing else to do action, reaction, etc. wise. I just like to say, after shoving, Zozo would like to pick his sword back up and then stand in the entrance of Matrin's Facing Matrin? Back to Matrin. Stay there and think about what you've done. Facing Matrin, back to cold. Facing Matrin, back to cold. So I'm not going to be able to animate that. So you'll just have to use your theatre of your imagination. No, that's fine. Uh, after Zozo, it is cold. You can attempt to make your save to get out of your hold, the hold person. Well, that's how well this goes. No. <laughs> Matron? Zero. Nice. 17. Passes. So you collapse onto the floor so now? You collapse onto the floor. However, I've still, you can use half of your movement to get up from prone. No, it's, it's, it's end of turn. End of turn, so that's, so that's the end, the end of your yeah. turn. Uh, man, 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 man. Tara! Tara's, uh. Just gonna nudge you. Uh, yeah, it's gonna forget about. and uh, just, uh. Sort of, because my mind's sort of being cut off because of the rage. Uh, just try to work out what's happening to Cold. She wants to figure it out. Just like, run it, you know, run it. Just trying to work it yeah, yeah. Do you want to roll to see if, you can figure, if they can figure it out, or you just. No, it's more like, um. Running around looking. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Chiron, buddy. He's <laughs> <laughs> now gone into doing a floss on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what you want? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> You're not entertained! <laughs> Just the old RuneScape dancing for gold in Lumbridge. <laughs> You're on top of this cliff. Mm -hmm. You have called to the gods twice now. Yeah, I'm just slumped to the ground now. I'm just <laughs> fucking done. Is there anything else you would like to say off the edge of the cliff? Is so that any, if anybody's listening? Like, Karen's just going to be sort of <laughs> on his knees, sort of like defeated, you know, because he feels there is no help from him. If you, as can, a, as a voice if you can give me a reason why it could be another stat that you use to call out to the gods as opposed to performance, we will use another stat for this. There's nothing viable. <laughs> right, let's have a look. I mean, <laughs> I mean religion. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's the same as my performance. <laughs> Plus one. You okay, I'm not. <laughs> I will let you make a religion check. So, see if the dice gods, gods lean on you a bit more. I really want to give you advantage, but there's no reason to give you advantage. It's Lloyd dropping the logic bomb over here. <laughs> Before Kyron gets up to walk away back down, mm -hmm. away from the cliffs, he's going to implore one last time that somebody or something gives him the strength to defeat Captain Ralphina. Yes. Come on. Is it going to be a religion, yeah? It's going to be religion. Eleven. 11 passes. <laughs> the DC for religion was lower than performance. As you are standing at the top 
on on your knees. Well, you turn bef- just before you turn to walk away. You're on your knees. You're pleading. You call out one last time for any anything, any help that you can be given. The wind that's been sort of wrapping around you and howling starts to pick up a little bit and there's a little bit more debris in the air and a little bit more moisture in the air as it would sort of even though you are 150 200 feet up on this gigantic cliff the air the moisture in the air is still there and as you look down over the cliff you see a sort of swirl begin to happen in the in the waves and you have to take a second and look at it and just reassure yourself that you're not just that desperate you're seeing something but a a face nearly 30 feet wide seems to be looking up at you from beneath the waves. The way there's a lot of, it's not stormy, but it's, like I say, it's very windy. The, 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 the waves are lapping at the rocks a bit, but you're sure you can see your face. And in, in the back of your mind, a voice starts to speak. And it says, Well, what are they? <laughs> For somebody who is so adamant we do not exist, you find yourself here asking for our help. Many of my brothers and sisters would not have given you the time of day, the the honour of speaking to us. However, I may also share an adversary that you may have. And with that, the face comes closer, and as it comes out of the water, a 30 foot does not come to describe the size of this woman, all in dark blues and blacks and that, all clearly made of water. You can see the waves lashing around inside her, behind her eyes, in her mouth, and as she speaks, sprays of water come over across you. Is that what you say to her? No. <laughs> <clears throat> I am willing to help you, Chiron of the New Dawn. Do not mistake for a sec. Do not think for a second that we do not know who you all are. However, for my help, I will need more than a, a tearful plea at the top of a cliff. Devote yourself to me. I have many names and I'm sure you'll come to work out who I am. Prove your loyalty, prove your devotion, and do my work, and I will give you the tools you need to reach your goal. And she breaks off into a million, million water droplets, swirls around you, falls back and forms into another face, but this time a bit further away, as the vortex that was she came out of is now in front of her and growing, becoming more and more wild, more and more vicious. And she will repeat, prove your loyalty to me. You can investigate to see what she would like you to do. I, I was just about to say that, like, will I just, like, intrinsically know, or is it something I'm going to have to query? Do you have, like, a passive in, um, uh, insight? I think there is passive, yeah. Um... Passive insight, yeah. Passive wisdom check. What, what is your uh, twelve? On a twelve, um, you walk to the edge of the cliff. You watch her. You watch her motions. You watch what she's doing and what she's saying. And you look down at the vortex, and are uh, the the option becomes quite clear. You can turn away and go back to the go back to the, the your campsite, where God knows what might be happening and go about it without her, or you can jump. Give yourself to her, and she will reward you. Whereas Chiron's not overly familiar with what gods are and aren't out there, because of his disbelief of them in the first place, he never really spent the time to... He knows some from passing comments, you know. So he... Obviously, as you said, he'll get this feeling of he needs to jump. But what that will lead to is giving him a bit of a pause for thought kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And um, he's just going to stare into it for a moment. 
and is just going to sort of then straighten up and uh, just sort of say to himself, not even to what it is in front of him, it's just going to be like, I've got to do this, there's no other way, I've got to do everything I can, and he's just going to jump. You leap forward off of the cliff and hit the terminal velocity almost instantly as the the water droplets in the air seem to be going against you, you're moving that fast. You feel like they are tearing into your skin, they are, they are damaging you, they are almost ripping their way into. After a few seconds of falling you hit the surface of the water but yet do not feel no, any water, you keep going and keep going into a pit of darkness and wake up in your tent. As you wake up in your tent you feel almost a vibration inside you that something has changed and something is, is now different and that you did what was asked of you. You are held to a bargain, mm -hmm. Kyron now making maybe the second biggest deal <laughs> of his life, but you do gain the powers that you went to sleep. That's the end of your turn. Which brings us back to Typhus. Uh, I'm just going to move closer. All the way up if you want. Uh, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, about there, just so a bit of distance and just go look towards my captain scene. Is this it's... the first time I've seen his face or have I seen it before? That's what you guys. Well, I'm asking. <laughs> as far as I was aware, I think it's the first time anybody has. Fair enough. Looking at my captain and taking in his his uh, unmasked face <coughs> and just because um, obviously it's my captain and then um, very much standing there going I will follow your lead I will um, excellent hold a action of casting um, chilling touch if needed if needed but I am not going to no problem do anything more than that back to you Zozo can, me. can we have a description of Zozo's face please <laughs> <laughs> can we have a description of Zozo's face please? Zozo's face so, first, have we actually established what race Sozo is? Human. Uh, human. You said, yeah, you said in your description on the episode yeah, one, human. you did say human now. What is human? Is uh, two children. <laughs> <laughs> Just on each other's shoulders. <laughs> Plot twist, it's Matrin. <laughs> <laughs> I am not second in command. <laughs> Matrin. <laughs> it was all a dream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, Kim uh, Drat wakes up. Wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> I was the captain of this pirate ship. <laughs> Pre code <-cobans laughs> and Twilight. Um, no, um, so descriptions of Zozo's face. So Zozo is human. Yeah. Um, facial features, I'm going to say for want of better phrase of nose, are very similar to mine, but he has no very minimal facial hair. It is very, always kept very cleanly shaven, but almost a very fine, mm -hmm. black stubble, very, very fine. Um, that covers jaw bones and then comes out, but I, and I mean it extremely fine. Yeah. Um, hair is slicked back, so shaven at the sides and at the back, mm. with a hair that is slicked back in that sort of fashion, um, which you can see is almost a pearl white. Mm -hmm. He has his left eye is sapphire blue, and his right eye. Well, it works perfectly as normal vision as anybody else would. It's also pure white, but, but it still works. But there's a distinguishable difference between his blue eye on his left and his white eye on his right. Accompanying the right eye is a scar that goes across his forehead from there to there. And that's how his face. Amazing, pretty cool. So I'm stood in the entrance of Matrin's tent. You are. Um, are they still? Are you, are you still both? You're not, oh, but no, you are. are. Yeah. I'm still facing. held. You said you were I'm facing you in the tent. Okay. Um, Didn't you say you dropped the spell? No, I'm you sure. 
pretty sure you do. I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, it's only broken on Matron, is it? I'm pretty sure I, like I can still. I, like, I can't argue. With I'm it. pretty sure I'm still concentrating on it while while having another spell prepared. Yeah, okay. Which isn't a concentration spell. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Um, <laughs> I'm going to order the Drake to, because mostly I like to keep him close. Obviously, yeah, he's been on your shoulder. Grab my shoulder. shoulder yeah. And he's only got summoned quite recently when we spoke to Captain Alexander. Yeah. Going to sort of shoot a look at the corner of the Drake, and the Drake's going to leave my shoulder and sort of circle the air. Mm-hmm. Um, from that point, Zozo is going to remain looking at Matrin, and th- th- this comes from a point of. <laughs> Where's he gone? There he is. <laughs> um, remain w- uh, looking at Matrin, um, holding one of his swords to his left hand on its hilt. And Zozo's thought process is he's well aware of the, of the talk he's had with Matrin. Mm-hmm. He's also well aware of Cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, he understands where Cold's coming from. Um, and Zozo, maybe naively, maybe slightly putting too much faith in himself, mm-hmm. um, would rather stand in between and take a cut in the back from Cold because he thinks to himself that might that might snap cold out of this. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, like he's, my, he's angry. He's my authority on can snap him out. My yeah. authority can snap Matrin out. It's not going to snap cold out of this. Cold, yeah. Cold's cold's hurting. Yeah. Me trying to take authority over cold is not going to not going to sway that. No. Me trying to take authority over someone who knows his place might. If I get hurt by somebody by yeah. mistake who's already hurting, it might. Yeah. I, I, can, I can see your train of thought, yeah. Yeah, no problem. So you they take in, I, you're just going to stand I'm there. I'm just going to send the Drake up to circle the air in front, uh, air around us, and, yeah. and I'm going to stay stood in that tent, prepped and ready in front. If Matrim was turned around, I'm stood like this, mm-hmm. uh, with my back to cold. Cold, that's your turn. Genuine surprise. <laughs> <laughs> that's what 18. Then you pass. Hold on, I have minuses. <laughs> minus <laughs> 18. <laughs> so you've got to be at 15, so unless you've got a minus 4. No, it's the last one. 17. You snap out of it at the end of your turn. Cool, you drop to 14 minutes so. though. Cool. Super hero. <laughs> um, no, you battle for it. Because <laughs> both <laughs> t- people yeah, are. Yeah, um, yeah. No longer effective does my concentration then drop. Them. I would assume yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, your turn. So, obviously, you're still up, aren't you? Like, yeah. when you've been dropped, you're still up. But I fell on the floor in a pile. Yeah, because you were always you were prone. Yes. Yeah. So, obviously. You now know it's when you say it, don't you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I was laughing at him because he went oh. like a bitch. <laughs> so. Zozo has kind of snapped Matrin out of this. Yeah. Matrin's like being frozen, like had that tunnel vision and when Zozo's reminded him of the facts. And because there was a surprise attack on him and Matrin just thought he was being attacked. Mm-hmm. So he just retaliated to being attacked. Yeah, he was just more not self really defense. thinking yeah. of who it is or anything like that. And that, now Zozo's got in the way, so... I mean, that was like 30 seconds <laughs> in game time. Yeah, so like, <laughs> it's just like kind of snapping to him now that this realisation that actually it's Cold who's in front of him, not just somebody who's trying to like yeah. rob him or like... Yeah. So while I'm on the pile in the floor, like, I'm going to kind of turn to face Zozo, but stay on the floor on my hands and knees and be like, Captain, it was a surprise attack. I didn't realise who was attacking me. I, I I will defend Cold with my life and I didn't mean for this because I, I just didn't realise I thought it was someone trying to rob me. As he's saying this, like, he's taking like his flail, dropping it to the ground and like, he's just in a kind of bowing position like on the floor and he's just slowly going to crawl out of the tent and kind of nudge his way just past Zozo completely, where you can see like it's just kind of slowly crawling and then I'm just going to crawl in front of Cold 
and I'm just gonna go like hand like head down on the sand and be like, Cole, if you feel like this is the only way that you will heal and you need this to heal your full self, then I give myself and my life willingly if this will help you heal from this process. However It's <laughs> just really moving my <laughs> I hope that you see Looking and you come, to. <laughs> come to your senses <laughs> and realise my love for you is so strong. <laughs> Should we come out? Of, you're happy to come out of combat. You and you, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna my turn on the floor in okay. Yeah, even for him rage. Give him my rage is strong. I'm gonna say both your rages would have dropped. Yeah, no, 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 say it's a minute. That was a minute. No, it's dropped. Oh yeah, because you weren't hit. Sure, you weren't hit. I'm going to ask Cole if he would like to stay in initiative for combat. Okay, so, what, uh, so I'm completely defenseless, no weapons, nothing, just like in front of you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You he was just about to stab you while you were sleeping. I don't think that's going to happen. He was just trying to heal himself, so, I think. Um, I think Matrin's on this journey of self. I think I'm at the rage thing. So as he drops to the floor, uh, all the hardened rock would just fell off him and the leak would have been. Mm-hmm. Normal holes because his sword had disappeared at this point because he's not in um, battle mode. And uh, we're out of initiative. If you'd like to be out of initiative, yeah, 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 yeah we are now out of initiative. And he goes, uh, turns towards you and says, Step away, stranger. This is between me and him. He doesn't realise it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> assuming. Him... I know, I know. Why um, would he? Eh? Why would he? No, yeah, no, no, definitely, no. no. Um, can I order my Drake to go and fetch the bottom half of my map? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which I will do. Yeah, your Drake's As the Drake's will... doing that, I'm going to put one hand on cold shoulder. Yeah. Ah, cold shoulder. Cold. You need to turn around, don't you? I mean, I'm no, assuming no, like, right. I haven't just gone. He's just done this. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know he was tending so you could see him. Okay, guys, watch, watch this. this. Hey. <laughs> I assume he um, would have watched you crawl in front of him. <laughs> that's he might just, that's that's just, just stood there going. <laughs> that's, not <laughs> <good>. <laughs> that's not my trend. What happened to my trend? It's always been dark. Put a hand on cold shoulder. Yeah. I got that twice. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's laugh. We had to do it twice. Exactly. Um, are we happy to say the Drake can come, go there and come back with the bottom half of my map yeah. in, a, in yeah. a time frame? Or? Yeah. yeah. Not an initiative, so. Yeah. So, um, so as I've turned around to put my hand on cold shoulder, uh, <laughs> only comes in free. Uh, the, the Drake has brought the bottom half of my mask back. Yeah. It's gonna, and he's going to put it on and tie it up yeah. himself. And just pop itself on my shoulder. Um, hand on cold shoulder. Hey. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zozo's will look directly at cold. Oh, um, it is me, cold. Sorry, I'm sure as I've never seen you without your mask on before. It is fine. Don't worry about it. I would like to ask <coughs> one thing. I don't know why. If you will. Would you mind returning to your tent, Cole? Oh, yeah. Is Matchman still on the floor, Match? Because the cold yeah. waiting for the cold. Because he doesn't realise it. Yeah, just turn. Cold walks, oh, walks, turns around, walks back to his tent. Imagine, go I'm back just, to yours. I'm, I'm just uh, on the floor waiting. Just going to literally look down and go, same with you, Matrin. Bed. We need it. Um, he would have lost notice because of all that thing fell off him. But he's now uh, close up to sort of permanent grooves down mm-hmm. his face where them tears were. Noted. So Zozo head back to his tent, you slowly crawl back into your tent. Karen, you never left your tent because you were on a journey of self-discovery. Yeah, being an initiative, I was tired, man, you know. No, that's why I did it that other river. <laughs> Heading back to your tent, or to the sea. Uh, we're... Do you sleep on the edge of the sea? No. My okay. people need to. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
<laughs> that's where I Typhus chooses to read. Yeah. Read, but he will um well, obviously he keeps a lot of stuff in his tent yeah. and that's where he will return the this evening just in case something else happens. He's assuming that the tension has been diffused, but yeah. he thought probably best to be um, closer for the time being. <laughs> yes, yes no, that's fine, carry on. I'm just doing this so that he knows that I'm next. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start doing it like Parliament. You can all stand up and I'll go, yes. <laughs> um, yes but he will. Um, How do you know this is British DD without knowing this is British <laughs> DD? <laughs> sir, sir, sir. Um, but he will. Um, line up with um, Zozo's tent and cast a message going that wasn't what I expected this evening to turn into captain if um, if we need if you feel like there are any further actions need taking please let me know can you, you reply to a message you can reply yeah. to a message it's supposed to be as a whisper but new you know, new mass whisper, this. whispered me in the chat <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, always, I've sent the two back to their tents. Yeah. Uh, Zozo's going to go back to his tent, but we'll not go into it. Okay. And we'll remain sat. Watching. At the front of his tent. My tent? No, at my tent. Oh, Sorry, okay. I, I, I was pointing at you. Um, yeah, I got confused with the actions words. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I absolutely love, do love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so... He's going to like plant the sword in the sand yeah. next to his front of, his, uh, of Zozo's tent and will remain sort of sat, cross-legged, mm -hmm. in front of his tent. Replying to yep. Typhus', Typhus message. Um, I agree. <sighs> it's not the way I intended this evening or I wanted this evening to go. However, I must applaud and thank you your efforts, Typhus. Take it as a, if I may use the marker. You gonna issue the mark? Issue a marker? Because he's helped. Yeah, and I was gonna say I'll repay it. So you're going to issue a marker to Typhus for his yeah. help tonight. Giving Typhus the ability to ask you of a favour in the future that you cannot refuse. In saying, after helping defuse the situation this evening, I owe much more than my life and the stability of our crew to you. Should you need anything ever, do not hesitate to ask and I will fulfil. Uh, you can add to your inventory or your notes that Zozo owes you a favour that he cannot refuse. And so you sit outside your tent, yeah. watching. You guys go off back off to your tent. Typhus, you're ready to be called upon if you're needed. You guys have gone off to think long and hard about what you've done. Tyrion, you are in your tent, feeling different and magical. Yeah, I'm oblivious to what's been happening. You've got no <laughs> idea what happened at all. You're tingling all in places. So, if anyone, no one else has anything they want to do that no. night, no. that we will go. Uh, you can then long rest over the night, and we will uh, start. We will come back next morning. Fantastic. Where you are planning to go on your excursion to see Carver Laroon in the night. Yeah. So, <laughs> next morning, <laughs> the sun rises, it wakes you all up. Everybody is. Tensions have subsided, I believe. You are going to go and visit Carver Larue, I believe. Is that the plan immediately? Well, this is going to be good. Can... <laughs> so, <laughs> can Matron be like one of the first to wake and he goes over to kind of cold area and tries to make him and love him? I would like Infringe on his territory. To... I, would, Jesus. I would like to stress that Zozo has not slept. He is still sat. Outside. Are you going to allow He's... him to go to Cold's tent? You take a point of exhaustion. Like, I have no weapons or anything. You take a point of exhaustion. No. You take a point of exhaustion? No, you're fine. But no, like, I'm going to go over to, like, <laughs> I'm going to go to his cooking area. It's not directly to, like, where his So you're not even invading his privacy. You're going to the one thing that he's really passionate about. And, like, I'm going to try and cook him a meal. And, like, I'm just going to be <laughs> clanging pounds and patterns and everything like that. Do you, you use performance for your cooking, don't we? Yeah. Do me a performance check. You do me a perception check. 
<laughs> is it a one? Yeah. Perception. It's two. <laughs> no, wait. It's just a slice of bread. It's a minus one. <laughs> you know, <what's> <laughs> I'm pretty sure about I get a plus one, so I'm on two. Hold on, let me let me get the correct. I've got cramp in my chest. Fucking Lauren and Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> We're um, never gonna save Rockley. <laughs> yeah, got, got the Chuckle Brothers in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a one. Patrick tries making a meal just as a slice of bread. So <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> is, what I'm seeing here is, you go and try and cook a breakfast, and you hit a natural one, which means you. Completely fail at making the breakfast. You set many things on fire. <laughs> you don't know how to control it. You don't know what the flavors match up. You're making a complete mess Gorgeous of it. Things have burnt. Yeah. Things have stuck to pans. But you've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> You're just having a lovely time in your tent, waking up naturally. And then, like, I'm just gonna have it all prepared for it. Like, stood at his tent, it's waiting like for dubious view food from. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, wild. It's, it's set it out. Has. Um, it's not started like, a small fire or is it still contained? It's, like it's not the nice food you get in Final Fantasy XV. Oh, okay. oh. That's food porn right there. Mm-hmm. So a fire did start on like the cooking, like it's all made of wood and that. Um, I'm going to say you managed to contain the fire, but you have burnt a considerable amount of the worktop here in the cat. What, what about my supplies though? Your supplies went to the ship. It did, correct. So yeah, so I've tried to make breakfast as a peace offering to Cold. So you, Cold will wake up and come out of his tent uh, and see the person he tried to kill last night sure. making him breakfast. Uh, yeah, he's going to yeah get out of the tent and just look over at him <laughs> and then walk off <laughs> towards. Um, there is, there is like a central campfire Cole. area if you want. Cole, 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 Cole. I've, I've made your breakfast. I, 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 I wanted to try and make your breakfast. Please, uh, please take it. Cold stops. And just. Thank you. He carries on walking. I, I'll leave it next to your tent. You put the down, <laughs> the breakfast down, you head over, follow him towards the house. He heads towards the house. <laughs> <us. laughs> First thirsty match really. heads <laughs> towards uh, Zozo, who I'm, I'm assuming is watching him. Come to <laughs> I would like to state that his eyes are shut, but he's very well aware of what's going on. Sure. Um, uh, so, uh, Captain uh, Zozo, hi there. Hi, hello. How morning? Good morning, Cold. Um, I would like to say I don't feel awkward. That would be a lie. Um, I'd also like to say that it would never happen again. But I don't know where that came from. And if I'm being honest, it was a bit scary. So without knowing, well, we do know the ultimate trigger. It won't happen again. Um, Zozo will stand up again, put his hand on Cold's shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> that just needs to be the Merch. name. Of the you episode. know, there's a t shirt there. This is the, that is the name of the episode, Cold Shoulder. Then there's a t shirt involved in that. <laughs> yeah, the t shirt, but it just says Cold Shoulder here. Yes. 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 Or no, it just says Cold. Yes. On the shoulder. Yeah, I'll get that side. I am going to make us a merch shop this weekend. <laughs> um, I want to say again. <laughs> we'll put his on hand the on, shoulder of cold. On the shoulder of cold, he, he will like place his out. hand <laughs> and struggle it. Yeah. Um, the same as he'd done during the night's events. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll say, Cold, you're. you're A lot, you're different to the rest of us. You haven't been jaded by the world. However, as your captain, it's part of my role to ensure you are one of us. 
I will take you on your word that it won't happen again, and you can take me on my word that I will not allow this to happen again. Should you need someone to talk to God, should you feel the way you felt, you come and speak to me. And we deal with the issue as I see fit, as you deem appropriate. Understood. There's no need to be formal with me now, Cold. Thank you, friend. So there's a hand on Cold's shoulder. Uh, Zozo will extend his left arm in the gesture of a hug. Uh, he immediately takes it. <laughs> so, and you get Bre- wrapped in the the most tight, loving hug yeah. you've ever. ever a, a look with a sense, sense of desperation underlying that as you hang off of your captain. Absolutely, like um... <laughs> you get a bit rough, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit dusty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone who grew up without physical confirmation a lot of the time. Absolutely takes that. Absolutely takes it. Can imagine just be like, no, that that actually college. Where's my hook? Does he sort of like, no, he's just like, peeking over, just like looking over and stuff. Yeah, he's just like, guys, I'm here as well. Imagine just runs off and peeking over. And these two had a complete character switch. Clarence, you get up, you head out of your tent. Typhus, you make your way out of your tent. The five of you standing outside Zozo's tent, prepared to head to Carver now. Zozo would like to go and put the rest of his armour on. You can go and put the rest of his armour on. Can I go and put all my weapons on? Can I go and put all my Yes, you can go and collect your armour. Carver has not left your side. I'm going to go and get my armour. Yeah, everybody can go and get off from the blacksmith. Yeah, because remember he was making something Yes, he was making something. I think it was Scale wasn't it? Oh, yes. are we going that way, or is it the wrong direction? You will go through the town to get to uh, there, but I'm not sure how close to or else we'll be going. Typhus is going to be looking at a map that he's probably had for a while. Of. Yeah. What I'll do is, probably when he's actually sketched himself, yeah. of the area and the surrounding what part, so that way he can... Sure. Yeah, the quickest route yeah, to yeah. get to what I'll do then is um, because obviously I'll figure what exit they're going to be taking out the city mm-hmm. um, I'll just tell the group that I've just got a detour quick and I'll meet them at the gate before we leave to the city yeah like to the city. before they go out the gate to the city so I'll there. so as you you're ready to leave now yeah so you head off back. So if you remember where your your camp was at the beach, off to the side of the main city, you head towards sort of as um, Typhus has sort of maps found the quickest route through some alleys and sort of rather than going along the beach and then up the main thing, you manage to just cut through some alleys, sort of cut out the take a chunk out of the journey, so to speak. You can nip. You can oh, head off the way that I know to the blacksmith. Yeah, your armor is completely ready, ready for you. You can collect that, add that to your inventory. It was a a test for him to get it. He imparts to you that it was no mean feat. He has worked through the night, called in favours, begged, borrowed, and steeled to get it done, but has delivered the uh, the scale mail on time, as promised. I'm going to give him an extra ten gold. Give him an extra ten gold. He will gratefully receive. Somebody's already in so much debt. I might as well just check. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, yeah, well, it's yeah. 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 Put it all on black, mate. It's fine. Fifth of the time. Just don't put it on mattress. <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't put it on mattress. It'll be fine. I can't wait till we come back to Rockcliffe and Matrian and Cole. He takes Matrian takes Cole to the fire pit to just blow up some steam. Um, yeah, Cole just becomes champion. So you sort of meet back up with them have, as they reach um, the first part of their journey. So as you get to the foot of the cliff face you have the central ravine of the splits where the higher society people in the city sort of reside and work in that there is the, the bizarre market at the bottom but the higher you go up the split the more sort of higher society there is with the chambers for the pirate council right at the top but slightly to the side i think we, we saw these in the last episode there are some like handmade lifts and pulleys there is a giant staircase that curls but we're talking a 200 foot 
you're more than welcome to take the staircase, but there are some. Yeah. So these these lifts and are sort of hand operated. You would need one of you to be pulling to get it up. However, sometimes you might be lucky enough to find somebody there trying to get a few couple of bits of silver, a couple of bits of uh, copper to take you up. As you approach them, one of them does land in front of you, and the sort of handmade gate opens, and people come off of it. And there is a short human sort of boy, a boy of about 15 stood in there, who seems to be there to try and get some gold off people by operating the lift. Would you like to say lift? How much? How much do you charge? Whatever you can spare. You, you tell me your price. Oh. The, the last four people did, did We chime, man! <laughs> the last four people haven't paid me, so. I, I, I toss the boy one silver and go to the top. His eyes light up with glee as he holds more than he has seen in a long time. He goes, thank, thank you, mister. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I and a cookie. And a cookie. I'm going to give him another gold as well. Gold. This guy is going to retire. <laughs> one gold, one silver, and two cookies. This guy is done for the week. This guy is happy as Larry. Uh, he pulls, takes the lift, the, the, the lift all the way to the top. It takes a good five minutes of this. Like, it's not hard work. Right. Is this come out of the overall fund? No, they have to pay for no, themselves. We've got our own pumps, haven't we? That's fine. Yeah. Not Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, it's, it's not heavy it's because of the way it works, it's quite smooth. But they are. You, you? No. <laughs> yeah. It's but it is quite constantly has to pull this. He gets you all the way to the top. And you step out onto the literal top of the cliff for the first time in a long time. For the first time, maybe some of you, you can see the entire city below you. You are standing on top of what is the council chambers, but it, it's not like you're, you're you're allowed to be there. It's fine. Yes. Typhus has suddenly become slightly noticeably more uncomfortable yes. because he is on so much. Solid ground. Yeah, and quite high up as well. Maybe. Yeah, the, anybody... height, the height doesn't bother him. It's the ground. It's the ground. How long till we're roughly going to be coming back to this point? Because uh-huh. we've got to travel. <laughs> Depends what happens, doesn't it? Can I speak to the boy and say, make yeah. sure that like, you keep coming back here, spend the day here, and when we come back, I'll make sure it's your worth. I will um, be here, sir. This is all I know, and this is all I do. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, quick. Um, I'd rather run it by you. Just with my armor class, um, having a bit of trouble here. My uh, scale mail rates at fourteen armor class. Mm-hmm. Um, I gain two with the shield, mm-hmm. but also I should be getting a plus one from my carapace, my hybrid uh-huh. trait, because I'm not wearing heavy armor. Scale mail's medium. Well, okay. It's only coming up as sixteen armor class. Are you okay if I override that to a seventeen? It makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I can see the logic there. So as you're standing on top of this cliff, you can see the city below you, and the almost instant rainforest, or tropical jungle type thing starts. Um, anyone who wants to can make a perception check on either direction. I'd like to. Which way? Into the, or back over the city? Oh. Yeah, Is it because cold is going to take a brief moment to not be in Zozo's shadow. Okay. Because he's just too fixated on the view of the city. Do so you want to turn around to look at the sea? Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whichever way, are we saying whichever way Zozo looks, Cole's going to look the other way? Or... Yeah, he is completely fixated, not on the sea, because he's been with, he's been uncomfortably close to you this entire walk. He's probably fell over a few times over your feet. <laughs> um, Zozo's like caught in by the scrub. Yeah, yeah, Come on, he's, he's fine. He's, You're fine. He's got no sense of like embarrassment or shame because he's just so... Uh... Uh, Zozo would like to elect to make a perception check on I'm mean, so, so, so you're going to do the sea yeah, yeah. I'll so I'll, I'll do um, the path you're going to do the rainforest so I'll do the opposite of cold the rainforest or the jungle let's see oh, okay, okay. Might to be on roll AC. perception no I just checked I was wrong about the AC the reason it's down one is because my dex is down it's not as well isn't it for dex yeah. yeah but once it's up to ten I, I'm time. uncomfortable because of the ground match one Ooh, you um, see a forest. Ooh, I got a sixteen for a fifteen. What was that? There was city one side and what the other? Uh, rainforest. rainforest. I've, um, got, I've got a dirty twenty-two. Looking into the rainforest. Yeah. Oh, I do. Looking the opposite direction of. Yeah. 
I do want to point out it's a six that I got, but I did roll a one. <laughs> yeah, I'll perception on the rainforest as well. Uh, twenty. Not that twenty, but just dirty twenty. 20. So. I do perception on the suit because I can see Cold looking out that way. So I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with disadvantage. You do realise when you have a crush on somebody, you are more likely to mirror them, you know? What is Bill it? and Frank. <laughs> I see it happening. I see 14. It. 14. Oh, good rolls. So, first things first, the people looking out over the sea, over the city, you do see everywhere you all travelled yesterday. You can see the fight pit in the distance, with which is already up and running people going around. People are already going in and out of the Dwarvish line. Somehow that magical neon sign is still really bright and glowing in the tropical sun of the daytime. But what did you get? Four, 15, 15 and a 14. Oh, oh, As you look past the city onto the sea, <coughs> you see the port, you see the new dawn bobbing away. City, oh, in the port you see one or two people's other ships and some like... There are the merchant ships that go to and from selling the wares illegally wherever they may go and get fenced. And then in the distance, you can just see three, maybe four, sort of silhouetted on the horizon, quite large ships that look to be coming towards the port. Mm-hmm. Okay. People looking into the rainforest, you see a rainforest. There's lots of leaves and trees <laughs> and things you don't like and ground. And a 20, 30, 20 and a 22, yeah. you look into somewhere that there doesn't seem to be a path. There doesn't seem to be a way to go like that has been deliberately put there you can see one or two sort of more favorable entrances into this forest but the one thing that you do notice that as you look through and look sort of not over because you can't see but as the way the island goes you can see a very large prominent solo tree that stands out amongst the rest clearly three or four times larger three or four times wider um as it's actually quite worked out quite well, the only two people to have ever met Carver LaRue of the group, you know where that is, that is where he lives. Would you like to travel into the forest? No, we're good, I think we'll just no? stay here, yeah. It's just leaves to him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just some trees. A bit hot, isn't it? And he's a uh, weak <laughs> grass types. <laughs> <laughs> Bulbasaur comes he's out. Strong against fire. Strong against fire, against fire, against fire yeah. True. Heading in to the forest. Yeah. Yeah, you make your way through the forest quite. Um, so they won't grow cold. Because they're <laughs> staring out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Zozo just said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Cold going... hasn't said to anyone, well, oh, some ships on the hack. No, no, no. He, he just What's going to through points. Cold's mind as he looks out over the sea? Uh, it's just um, trying wow, to. Wow, that's a lot of ships. <laughs> No, he's, he's not even really paying attention to anything. He's just staring at the horizon. He's just trying to deal with this uh, over... Sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Un, unspent rage mm-hmm. that he just wants to get rid of. Um, so you put your hand on his shoulder, you're steering back the way you want to go, you make your way through. There's no path. Not hand on shoulder. I'm all the way over. Come on, Carl. Like right, Bud's out on holiday. Max nice. just sees him being pulled away and is like, oh, quick, we need to go. <laughs> and Matron doesn't think about the ships either in the distance. He's just, just sees ships. To yeah. him, it's just, he's seen a lot of ships, but he just sees just three ships. People, just three more sure. ships coming yeah. into, into so don't need to be, We need to go see Carver. Mm-hmm. Um, well, aware, well aware of his relationship with Carver. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we need to go see him. So, no, it's cold as zoned out, sort of arm over, come on, let's go. Yep. And expecting the rest of his crew to follow him. I'm guessing you'll follow. Yeah. Yeah. You head through. So, there is no pathway, walkway through here, but you guys have both know Carver LaRue. You know how to get through. You manage to get your way, get your way through, like, a good mile of rainforest before you get to this sort of semi-clearing. There's about... I don't know, 50 foot circular clearing with yeah. this, this tree in the middle. You can see there is um, a sort of almost doorway in the bottom of this tree. It's quite wide. It's, it's not, not massively wide, but it does go up lighthouse-like. It's like 
And as you look up, as your eyes follow up the centre of this, this massive tree, you look to the top where the sun is sort of behind where the top of the tree is. And coming towards you is a giant bird. Wingspan huge, descending out of the sun towards you. Uh, it gets to within about 10 feet of you. What would you like to do? I'd like to curl up like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cold immediately, summon a sword. Um, Summons a sword? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can Matt can jump in front of the captain? Yeah. Because obviously nothing comes between him and the captain, so he jumps straight in front of the captain. Can I uh, do a nature check? Yeah, you can do it. You, you, if you want nature or investigation. It's up to you. But yeah, I'm going to jump in front of the captain to make sure he's safe. Yeah, I'm just taking defensive stats, I'm not like... Yeah. What's going to happen to that? Is know. it bad? <laughs> it was three again. <laughs> it's a bird. So you see... You don't even re- you even get bird, you just get giant dark thing coming out of the sun, <laughs> blocking the sun from you. Think Batman descending upon you. Amazing. It's the end of Arkham Knight. Anything uh, from uh, anyone else? Preparing a spell just in case. Yeah. So, so it continues to fall... Gets to within Picks up my ten feet and stops and hovers in front of you. Stop in there. Anybody else like to investigate him? Is you're asking for an investigation check? On if you want to can come forward and see if you can figure out what's going on. Uh, matching <laughs> ready rage, not fully go into rage. But you're you're ready. contagious. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I'm assuming I need to realise it's a bird. Says they would. Curled up like an egg. Did he actually? Yeah, up? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they played Dark Souls. <laughs> no, I've not. Okay, cool. Um, no, I thought you just dodged wrong there, didn't I? Assuming that you're thinking that that might have picked him up mm-hmm. and brought him back round to, to, to where the next was. No. So, go, feeling like a little bit silly, but considering that everyone else is doing their own thing, he's gone. Yeah, <laughs> What the actual fuck? <laughs> hey, uh, what, would it... what did you roll on your initiative? Uh, did you do an investigation? I don't know. What do you want, investigation? Investigation. So, Zoe's so standing up going, I've tried to be clever there, but I think I've got away with it because we've got somebody <laughs> with a flail out, somebody else <laughs> ready in his. Inspe- right, everyone else, uh, cool, yeah, let's go. Make a investigation check. Mm hmm. That's a seven. Oh, for the love of God, God. Uh, what is going on? Being shit, I'm gonna reach into my pouch and go. Cookie. Cookie. <laughs> As you are standing there, hand up, yeah. holding the cookie to this winged silhouette of a thing. From behind you, a hand reaches round and goes, Yeah, cheers, thanks. And takes it out of your hand and starts to eat it. Oh, hello, friend. So, ah, cold. Heard a lot about you. As you turn around, so I'm guess do you all turn around to see who I've, I do? I've, I've, <laughs> I've got in front of his head. Yeah, you're in front of. I've jumped in front of him. for whiplash. No, that looked more like you're doing the shampoo advert. Yeah. <laughs> so anyone that turned around to see this new voice that has joined the group will see a sort of hunched over, five footish, cloaked creature who's dressed in entire black sort of, um, almost druid-like robes, and with a hood up pulled over their eyes and a beak just protruding, protruding slightly from the hood as Carver LaRue, the um, Kenku, is stood behind you, going, Oi, Carver LaRue, you son of a bitch. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so, so was like, to, y- you can't see he's embarrassed because of all the facial yeah. that he's now wearing, um, but will cross his arms, very similar to Kyra, who's gone, you son of a bitch. I, I was actually going to add, just after that, can I go up and do like... Uh, Dylan, you're gonna hold his hand, hold your hand out. Yeah, like, you know, Dylan, when you do that. Yeah. So you walk up and hold your hand out, and Carver's gonna just give you a polite nod, 
and then walk round you all and sort of head towards his house. Can I speak to the captain and go, is it safe? Is there any danger? So, yeah. so he's there. Car- the Carver the has gone. He's just started walking in towards his house. That's fine. Um, as Zozo stood there, sort of now like this, going, he's fully aware that he's made a bit of a tit of himself, but he's not going to announce it to Carver. Uh-huh. Um, Zozo's fully stood there, stood there thinking, oh, this is this is Carver's new system. The bird's checking who's coming in, the bird's going to... Uh, the bird's still there. The bird is still just okay, in front so of it's you. it's not an illusion. <laughs> Um, on the investigation check I did, Zozo was thinking oh, that's Carver's. Okay. He, he's doing a he's doing a loop round. He's, yeah. he's keeping an eye on what's coming to Carver's house. Who's coming in? Tries to cut up like an egg to try and fit in. See, you know, I know what Carver's like. Um, Zozo's gonna ter- uh, you know stand there with his arms folded and go, yeah, uh, this is Carver Lou. We appear to be safe. Uh, you're gonna go forward to follow him into yeah, the house. Does anyone want to look at the the bird one last time I, as you I, go past? I was gonna say out of the sod. Well, with it, with it, so it's not. An... I was actually gonna say I'm not just safe. I'm a dumbass because I can talk to animals. <laughs> so would you um, would you like to attempt to communicate with the giant thing? Yeah, well, as I know, it's obviously something to do with Carvalaru and it poses no threat. I'm, I'm gonna gonna be honest. It's something to do with Carvalaru. Okay. I was going to say I was just going to roll an investigation check as I walk. Roll an investigation check as you walk away, as you walk past. That is so much better. That is a nineteen. A nineteen. As you walk past it, you remember it came within five feet. You follow Carvalaru sort of towards his house, and as you look up and sort of reach to touch it, you notice that it's not alive at all, and it is some sort of stuffed mannequin that is being <laughs> held by some pulleys and system which was triggered by a tripwire that one of you hit and was deployed in an attempt to scare you off. It's a scarecrow! Are you still trying to talk? Are you still trying to talk to it? <laughs> I was going to say, well, we're defensively shares that information. <laughs> yeah. So you... I, I walk past, turn, ar- turn around and see um, Kyron... <laughs> trying to talk to this thing. Try, try, trying to talk to it and go... Hi, I'm Kyron. <laughs> <laughs> go... I think you might as well try to communicate from this side. <laughs> <laughs> and, ju- and just walk past, walk on and see what happens. Yeah, I'll just follow and then notice so and you just shake my head to myself. Like head twat. into the <laughs> door two of that you. you saw earlier into this and it is essentially what you all assume it would be. A carved, a hollowed out tree which has a spiral staircase going around the entire middle of it, like that around the outside, with different floors where Pete, where Carver lives, works, breathes. The people that have met him before know that Carvalaru is a druid. He has uh, been on the island longer than anybody. He's just one of the fixtures that everybody's either heard of him or or has met him. He taught me. He, well, it's up to you if you want to let people know that. He, he was the druid that taught Chiron the ways of, of course. Yeah. druidism. <laughs> the dead lib. Um... He used to be a member of a quite prominent crew, but these days will offer his services as a magic expert, a procurer and excuse me, a consultant on magical artifacts and goods, which is why you've brought the chest to see him. I knew we forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to try and cut it to see if I could re- reiterate that we forgot to bring the chest. <laughs> So you follow him in, and as you walk in, he's stood in the corner in a sink, sort of almost washing up. Kind of oblivious to the fact that you followed him in. Doesn't help. Who are you? Cold. Ah, cold. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. You got any food? Food? Yeah. Don't eat food. Can I have some, please? For yeah. you? Yeah. No, my food. What if I pay? Pay? Still my food. Okay. Can I just have a general look around the place to see if anything... Do you have a perception check on? I was going to say, if there's a chair or anything, can I just go sit down? 18. So in this room, this is the kitchen. Yes. You've walked directly into this guy's kitchen, but where you would see a stove and cooker and a 
I know, fridge. You know how fridges, but like a storage. Ice box. Ice box, a, a larder. There's just box after tray after tray after tray of bird seed and <laughs> things he has collected that he likes. There is um, magical items piled up. Like You look over and see what you assume would be like a pretty powerful magical sword that's almost glowing. It's just chucked on a shelf. Um, and lots and lots of that sort of thing. You can't see any workshop sort of stuff because that's maybe on a different level. But on this bottom level, you can see pretty much basically a horde, not in a dragon's horde sense, more of a somebody that's hoarding stuff and there's just shelf after shelf of this magical crap. Mm. Pardon? This week on Hoarders. <laughs> Scrappy challenge. Let's do what? I'm going to go sit down because I'm familiar with Carver to an extent, so I'm just going to make myself at home. Can I go outside and just like be checking things out, make sure it's safe, like, and just doing a general kind of scouting, looking around? You can do a perception check outside to see if you can see anything. Dirty 20? There's not really anything. Nothing stands out to you as immediate threats. There's there's a dark forest on every side, which could be just full of threats, but you were guided by two people that knew where they were going, so you managed to get through it quite quickly. But there's nothing's like, there's no, like, no one's followed you that you can see. I mean, that Imagine was... just going to kind of hang around outside and just keep, like... You can stay outside. Yeah, patrolling no around and keep an eye on things. Karen sits down. Mm-hmm. Um... Put my feet up on another chair. And put your feet up on another chair. I'm making like, myself at home. So as you do, Carver spins around and comes over, sees you and sort of laughs to himself and comes and sits down next to you and being and been like, it's been a while. Ky- 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 Kyron? Yes. Kyron. Ky- it's been a while, Kyron. Yeah, uh, I can't remember. Because obviously, uh, I'm trying to think how long it roughly would have been. Seven years, twelve months, three weeks, two days, and about an hour and a half. (laughs) (laughs) Who's counting? (laughs) No, no one's counting. Yeah, it's uh, been quite a while. How are you keeping? Oh, you know me. The same old, same old, same old, same old. Yeah, I uh, see your hordes are bigger than last time. Oh, that that crap. It's that's nothing. Nothing. You, you like shiny things. Yes, I know. You used to take them from me. Yes. <laughs> Do you have shiny things? No, and with that, I'm going to sort of just put my hand on my coin pouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. It goes. <laughs> okay. Who have you brought to my home? Uh, well, uh, crewmates of, well, crew of mine, including our captain here, who... Is this a rather intimidating looking gentleman? Because obviously you've still got your mask and everything. Yeah, yeah. So. And just little thing, drape. Um, I'm guessing you've got your drape. Yeah, um, you've met him before though. Yeah, I know Carl. We know, I know Zuzo. Didn't know him before he was an egg. <laughs> but egg Zozo is Zozo nonetheless. Well, well are you old friend? friend? Days are days, are they, Carl? Who have you brought to my home? I have brought my crew. My brothers, if you will. I may be an old crazy bird, but even the story of Zozo becoming a captain reached my ears. Had quite the night in town last night, so I hear. I don't think I can be held as responsible for my top general's cover. They... Do as they see fit. They've helped me through a lot. And I will stand by them for that. It's interesting I ask you about your evening and you talk about your generals. Well. From what I hear, your generals didn't quite uh, stand up to the leader of the Obsidian Federation, did they? (laughs) No. No. I'm sort of going to give them a look because obviously you know, I didn't know about this. No, Carver, they did not. And my. You know Calroon. <laughs> I know Calroon. Captain me, Calroon. Me and Calroon, we go. We go back, as the, fra- as the phrase dictates. Yes. Yes. Um, he, he, he implied the Obsidian Federation are 
Never mind them, but Captain Erdek Zander are causing us some trouble. Things are not great in the city. No. You know me. You. You know my code. You know how I see the famous the world. Zozo code. The only pirate to ever do it for the grace of good. I don't think I am stretching for much by asking for humanity in the way of piracy. You see him not recoil, but the word humanity slightly lands differently to how you imagined it would. Mm -hmm. By him not being human. Yeah. Um, he quickly it's only a brief moment he quickly re, like, regains his resolve and looks around the room at the three the four of you that are still in here because you're outside enough with the niceties it <coughs> was I'm not a silly bird people come to see me when they want things what do you want? I will not cut the thread as deeply as it needs to be oh, and I will cut straight to the point appreciate it we've stumbled across an artifact which neither of us can discern its meaning we've forced it we've hit it we've pried it the rule of three Meaning we have got nowhere. Carver. You wish for me to tell you what it is. We wish for you to help us understand. Carver. Show me. I whip it out. The. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, step co <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere, some slow jazz starts. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely a raised episode now. <laughs> yeah, um, this is going to have to go out late, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Carver said, whip it out. Whip it real. Uh, I, would so. I would like <laughs> Zozo to... So, I, I don't know where people are situated. I know you're sat there. I know you're outside. Yeah, I'm I'm sat sat next where next you Carver. two are. I will just be stood somewhere in your vicinity. I am. Because I'm not quite... Awkwardly. Trying to be on you. Zozo is well aware that the cold, the cold's there, but he's gonna, he's gonna direct his. Where, where are you in, in regards um, to where Zozo is? So, could I borrow a bit of paper for a second? Just yeah, to, no, it's fine. Anyway. Oh, just to illustrate. So, so, say Zozo and Cold are unconscious mm -hmm. there. I'm about there with those two there, roughly. So I'm close. I'm definitely to my left. I, I, I'm in your vicinity, but I'm, I'm left. but I'm. Um, um, a new own in the box. Zozo would like to raise his left hand in, in, in a gesture towards Typhus. Yeah. And goes this. This is the man you wish to speak to from my crew. I, I as he says that I reveal from my cloak the box. Carver. Not taken aback as such again, but is like oh, there's somebody else. As he sees you, he instantly sort of, without moving his entire body, moves his head and becomes very transfixed on Typhus, and for a second holds his gaze. I can't think of the word. Measuring him, watching him. And after a few seconds goes, walks over and moves his gaze to the chest. You see his eyes widen, his little, you can't really see his eyes, yeah. but he's had the hood on the entire time, but he, you can just see the slight movement, his eyes have widened as he looks at the chest and takes in what it is. Um, he waves his hand a little bit. Um, and you feel a sort of pulse through the through the walls and the roots of the tree, and he sort of his head twitches a bit as he sort of receives the information he wants. 
he will look it back at you and hold his hands out as if to say may I take the may I you pass, I, I pass it over while looking in the direction of uh, the two who are more familiar with so he takes the chest I'll just give you a slight nod to say balancing it in one hand as he walks back over to the sort of table area you we see he will tap on the side of the table a few times and the table will turn magically to reveal like a work area workspace area he puts it down in the center puts his hands back together you came across this artifact you stumbled across the artifact was your words I think you stole it stole it No. How <laughs> does a crew of pirates come into possession of the most sought after chest in these seas? Normal Tuesday for us, really, isn't we it? found <laughs> it. Helen <laughs> Winker Zozo. <laughs> Want me a deception check? Why? I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> Are you actively trying to deceive him, though? It's true. Disadvantage. Very much. Can I give him a minute? <laughs> <laughs> you can give him the help action to roll no, a flat no, if you no, want. No, no, a natural no. One. A natural one. Do not make the mistake that thinking models of giant crows is the extent of my defences. Yeah, no, I know that all too well. You know that all too well. You flash to like many a horrible lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Where he wouldn't necessarily kick the shit out of you, but he's No, you came home. I, I, I remember home from him teaching me he'd actively set things up just to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> You'd be coming home drunk one night from the town, walking all the way up there, and then just stuff's coming out of the forest at you. Ah! It Pretty would much. be a mistake to deceive me. Zozo. Zozo would like to counteract his opinions with a perception check. You can do a perception. Do, you can do a perception check. So it comes in the vein of Zozo wishing to go. You are correct. Trying to deceive you, Carver would be wrong. Just as you try to deceive us by saying the things behind you, in your nest, in your hoard. Are nothing more than trinkets. There is no deception. Let's not play fools. How? I know there are swords and trinkets in the collection you keep that thrive on magical energy and on power. Let's not play fools. Let's not forget, it is you, Jonathan, that came to me. How did you get this chest? At this point, Zozo will unclasp his entire mm -hmm. headpiece. And we'll remove it. <laughs> <laughs> the Imperial March starts for some reason. I was a predator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Up until this point, we had never seen his face, and that's yeah. what there is. Um, we'll place it on the on the table that has now magically transformed to mm -hmm. the cover, and we'll place it on the table. We'll try to take his best non-aggressive stance. So hands behind his back, sort of clasped. Mm -hmm. So he's got no way quickly of accessing his weapons or anything that, that they're clasped behind his back so full Morpheus yeah behind his back clasp there's no way that he can <laughs> he, he can seem threatening mm -hmm. we have been in pursuit of this chest as have many we if you will Carver stumbled accidentally upon it I cannot guarantee you that me or anyone in this room ascertains or know the purpose of it one sec 
That's alright. I'll tell you a bit. Okay, go, come. However, you were my main important. <laughs> it's so, I know we have a running theory about him, but when you said that, I went to Alfie Solomon's and you oh, were doing Bane. Yeah. <laughs> He's only got one voice. He's only got one voice. Oh, Carry on. Oh, you are really important. <laughs> I was murdered. You are a fucking whop, mate. Um, tense moment, tense moment, tense yeah, moment. What, where do you want me to start from? you start of me, your last thing you were saying. We do not ascertain or understand its purpose. I feel it has a greater meaning than what we know. That is why we are here. We need your knowledge. We need to know mm. what we hold. You. What is it? <laughs> Zozo will place his hand on cold shoulder. E. No. 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 Nothing more than that. Yeah. Nothing more than that. Can I be starting to like come through the door because I hear yeah, you shouting? Quickly, Milton. <laughs> Do me a perception check. Nope, didn't hear it. Carver listens intently to hear what you're saying. This is a chest known as the Deadfire Chest. A chest that disappeared almost 60 years ago. Tell me what you know about the last and only Pirate King. Rasta McCree. Do you want to do a history check? And I'll tell you what you know about that Rasta McCree. Can we? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, you can do the. We'll do it as sort of, like you can all do your own checks, but we'll do it as a group if you want. I think I'm proficient in history. I'm outside, so I can't. Be You're honest. outside. You're My history is sucking dick at the minute, so. I am proficient in history. I thought you were going to say you're fresh and sucking dick for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Just have a weekend. Do you want me to have that? Nice. 21. 21. Anyone else? What were we rolling for, sir? <laughs> History. That's a natural one minus one, so I've rolled a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I can add an eight to cold. An eight? You can add an eight to mine. As in, I rolled an eight, so if oh, we're doing it as a group yeah. one, I can add an eight to it. 13. You're outside. On a 22. Yeah, I'm not going to do this as Carver. I will just tell you what you know. Mm -hmm. um, and forgive me people at home as I read my notes off of a piece of paper. Let's go to the wall. Sorry. <laughs> right, cold. <laughs> uh, so, Rockcliffe was founded a good 80, 90, maybe even 100 years ago. It was started. The history of how Rockcliffe was started isn't it isn't important. There is a story there if you ever need to know. About 20 years later, Captain McCree and the crew of The Last Breath arrived on the island and quickly built a reputation as one of the meanest, most violent crews, with Captain McCree leading by example on every turn. After becoming widely known as the top crew, Rasta McCree, on a day now known as Bloody Sunday, killed captains of four of the top, crew, of the top crews and declared himself on the top of the uh, cliff as the Pirate King of Rockcliffe Bay. What followed was 10 years of tyranny and hell on the island. Life was still free and people lived as they saw fit, but McCree and his crew basically treated the city as their personal playground, killing, raping, stealing, and became all, oh, sorry, killing, raping, and stealing all became commonplace. And the reputation of this, and I know I've used this quote before and I'm gonna rip it off of someone else, hive of villainy and scum mm -hmm. that's th this 10 year period is where this became not a free city but a pirate city full of dishonour and yeah. horrible things welcome to Necromunda <laughs> after 10 years of King McCree a group of other captains decided to put an end to the put an end to him 
led by a man called Captain Roscoe and funded by a man called Captain Fairbrook. They set up an ambush of uh, the now infamous Massacre in the Wrecks, where four crews banded together to massacre the crew of the Last Breath and Captain McCree with it. However, legend says, and legend and myth says that once he died, as he died, sorry, McCree revealed that he had hidden the treasure which would change the fate of the world, and only he or his heir would be able to find it. He would hide the first clue in a chest called the Deadfire Chest. That is what happened to the Pirate King. There has not been a Pirate King since, given the state of life under the Pirate King. When he was killed, that is when this mantra mentioned in the previous episode of a free city, free of rule, free of, free of rain, truly came into effect. As a result of that, the Pirate Council was formed in a peace, not necessarily a ruling capacity, but a keep peacekeeping capacity. Murder, fights, rape still happen, but not in a so commonplace setting. Mm -hmm. People like, for example, in order to try and combat the rapings, loads of sort of brothels were set up. If you want to do it, go and do it there. <clears throat> to stop people being drunk and being dicks in fights, taverns were set up. The Pirate Council still exists to this day as a way to sort of keep the peace. The Pirate Council, as we've heard previously, is held by six of the top pirate lords who have a representative of their crew on that council who make decisions on their behalf. Uh, on a 22, you can have some questions if you need them. Uh, no, Cole's going to go... Um... I don't know much, um, but from what I've heard around town and the ship, and he just reels off everything. The entire says. story <laughs> yeah, yeah. of Captain McCree. Um, Birthdays. <laughs> like, exact dates. <laughs> it's, it's really it was 4pm on, the, on yeah. the... Legend says it was exactly this time. Yeah, he just reels off everything. Carver listens to you intently, nodding along with everything you say. It would appear appears, Ozo, that your crew know more about this chest than you realise. I just didn't put two and two together, do you know what I mean? With all due respect, son, I wasn't talking about you. And his eyes rest again onto Typhus. Oh. <laughs> oh. He holds out his, ha his hand and motions for you to come to like over to where the chest is on this table. Am I still getting the same sense that I got the first time I interacted with the chest? The sense of it calling to me? Very... In fact, do a... Insight? Perception? Your choice. Insight or perception? The chest is good. Either way, it's a... Um, the Navy now. It's a seven. Seven. Either way. So what you, what you can, rather than hearing it and feeling it, you can remember it. Yeah. So you know <coughs> this call to you. It also called to you in the same way that the thing when you were a child the called to you. The paper in the... the... The chest, the paper, whatever you saw. He will mention motion for you to come forward. I will ob oblige. As you come forward, he snatches your wrist. Like suddenly, but then slowly puts your, your hand onto the chest. And with a look deep into your eyes, I am maintaining eye contact with him. Waves another, kisses you. He kisses you. <laughs> he waves. How with the beak? Don't discriminate. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to. Work it's more of it. a. That, that, that's fine. <laughs> just pecks your face a bit. I, I've got no <laughs> farm. Real long term. I've got no farms with this. I just want to know how the physiology he, works. He holds your hand onto the chest. Yep. <laughs> Why is it always about every time we play? It's about Tiger. Well, I, I, we're kissing, not doing anything else. He, he actually, he, he holds your hand on the chest, waves another hand as he silently, silently casts a spell, yeah, he does. and a wave of magic fills the room. As again, this magic is felt going up the sides of this tree, this house, this home, almost to the point where. Do me, do me perception. 
Eleven. The worst guardsman. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Obsidian Federate. No, I'm joking. They, yeah, we're surrounded. It's yeah. like, look yeah. out! <laughs> There's that one guy! <laughs> so, yeah, outside like going. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, like solid state in the box. Just get rid of the JP. The sides of the tree sort of vibrate again, uh, which is visible from outside, but somebody's looking at a different tree. <laughs> it seems to be going up the tree, it then sort of vibrates down the tree into his hand, which comes through himself and onto you, through you, and through your hand onto the chest. Instantly, where your hand was, the chest starts to dissolve, falling away bit by bit like a burnt piece of parchment flip, like flicking off it and landing it as it does smoke starts to billow suddenly fading away to reveal a golden eyeglass you know like a telescope thing That's really good ticket. golden ticket because of the word golden oh that was a reference do we cut? Yeah, we will. <laughs> cut most of Josh's stuff, don't worry. Is, is Josh even in the episodes? <laughs> no, he's outside beating up a tree. <laughs> a, <laughs> a golden spyglass, which seems to have that same glowing effect that the chest had. It almost seems to be steaming or like hot to the touch as it sits there, levitating, suspended about six inches above the table. You do. I reach for it. As you reach for it, you get your hand gets six inches away as it turns and meets your hand. You realise it's not hot to the touch. It's not cold to the touch. It was just the way it was looking, the way it was appealing to you. And as, and this is the only way I know how to describe it, and I'm sorry for people at home if you don't like them. But you know how when Harry picked up the right one for the first time <laughs> and it felt like an extension of his own arm? <laughs> I know not everyone likes Harry Potter. That is the same feeling you get. As you list that lands in your hand, you feel so almost attuned with this thing, like it was always meant to be yours. You, you, do right it. Yeah. you found the right kind of crystal. There's that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody think of a reference for that same thing that I've just described from a different IP. Go. We'll come back to you. <laughs> it feels like this This was always meant to be Typhus's. My love for you. <laughs> okay, you're back in. You're back in the... <laughs> We're leaving all of this in. <laughs> Would you like to do anything? Look. Have the rest of the crew that's inside the building both with a sense of acknowledgement that this is mine mm-hmm. but confusion oh Jesus <laughs> confusion as well <laughs> she just went mine oh Jesus say, gone <laughs> Typhus will look around the room at you guys what are your guys reaction to what you've just seen uh, my look at all their faces and then lingering on Zozo's yeah because obviously, Captain. Yeah, I am Captain now. <laughs> Cold, stop with you. Uh, well, uh, the entire time I've been over Zozo's so, so shoulder, and he's just been feeling heavy breathing <laughs> the entire time. Like in, in excitement, but as soon as that happened, like he hasn't breathed in a good two minutes. <laughs> uh, and he's just like trying to take it all in. Karen? I'm just going to be watching. Um, sort of keep an eye out for anything that might be dangerous if you get what I mean because mm-hmm. we don't know what this thing is we don't know what mm-hmm. correlation it has with Typhus like anything could happen so I'm just sort of like Chiron's adrenaline's pumping ready to move if something happens mm-hmm. uh, Zozo I would like to think he's aware of Kyron in his state of readiness. Yeah. He's going to slap Cole on the back 
<laughs> snap him out of his his state of awe. Mm-hmm. Um, with his hands on his back, we'll look at Typhus and go, it, it, it's up to you, Typhus. You look through it, I look through it, we look through it. It's up to you. I, you can do it, Peter. I turn to Carla and go, do you know what it is? No. I can only tell you what your colleague already knows. And also show you what you have. You can. Does anybody want to do an investigation check on it? Or t- sorry, does anyone want to look through it? You can make an insight. Yeah. Let's try and figure out what it is and what's going on. Well, let's make an insight check. Yeah. Um, Thirteen. So you're watching it. You listen to the story Cole tells about um, the captain, the pirate king, Raston McCree. It is a gift. Your first thought is, why didn't I know that? Mm-hmm. About the king. And then the... I think the line about the air. I think you all realised that as I was describing it. The line about the air and leaving a treasure that would change the, the fate of the world. And only his air could find it. That lingers with Zozo. And then when the spyglass essentially presents itself to Typhus putting one and one together you might you might have got two and you might assume that Typhus yeah. is that heir but you also might have got three there's no confirmation that Typhus is that heir but the evidence in front of you suggests he might have something to do with it um, can Zozo obviously he's got <laughs> cold Quite close to him. Cold backpacking you. Yeah, <laughs> Cole's there. Um, he's, he would like to say, "Cold." I got your back. Uh, Zozo would like to say, "Cold." Just wait here for me. And he would like to take his sort of like physical contact away from Cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> doesn't do that. <laughs> stood arms folded. Go, Hyphus. Do you trust me? I do, Captain. Zozo would like to hold on to the spyglass and force it up to Typhus's eyes. Or well, one of his eyes. Doing anything? Well, he was going to put it up there anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> so. I'll just give my hands a rest. <laughs> so, as you look through it. So, it's less, less of a force and more of like. It's not. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those holding it while Titus looks through it. I've, um, it's, it, it's kind of gone. Do you trust me? That happens to assist. Let's yeah. see. Let's see what happens. So as you look through this spyglass, you see the room in front of you as described. Yet, red in colour. There is a reddish hue over everything. And as you reach up to take it from back from Zozo to hold it for yourself. Yeah you hold it slightly and the way you move it slightly the reddish hue turns into a yellowy colour and then as you sort of think oh what was that you move it again and it goes green and then it changes to blue and then it changes to pink and then they start almost kaleidoscoping into each other as a very clear different colours are coming across the lens but you can see what's in front of you you can see the room nothing stands out through it apart from there are very different colours coming across your eyes would anybody like to do an investigation check on it on the actual object by looking at it can do or it's it's not really while I'm holding it you can do it while you're holding it if you want I'll assist assist thank you but I'm not seven yeah I was going to say if I'm going to go me and you. Yeah. If Carl's given me advantage, I've got a 17. A 17. As you hold it in your hands, you bring it down from your eye, you're watching it, you see it is, it is not solid, because obviously you see through it, but it is solid gold and it has black detailing where, in sort of the reverse of the chest, if I remember rightly, the chest was more of a darker colour with gold trim. This seems to be gold with darker trim. 
And as you run your hands over it, every sort of e edge of it is smooth. It's in four or five different pieces, so it can be collapsed and opened up. And as you run your hands over one bit, you switch it around, you notice an engraving along the bottom, which are numbers, a set of coordinates. 17, does it say? Did you get? Yes. Yeah. As you run your fingers across it and you turn it to look at the, look at the numbers, you very, very quickly realise that these are coordinates. Yes. And a soft sense of foreboding and doom overcomes you as you very, very clearly recognise these coordinates. You've spent years studying maps of where you've been, where you've not been, drawing your own maps, procure, procure, procuring more maps from <laughs> battles or from Mother Idol. But these coordinates specifically have always been inside your mind, as the coordinates of your home port are very, very clearly revealing themselves to you. The coordinates of Port Mandalay. It's almost that moment where you read it and your excitement and your anticipation of it are met with the foreboding doom of... Oh, shit. Shit, that's home. Carl turns from to them. Do their numbers mean anything to you, Cyphers? I know our heading. I'm not looking forward to where we're going. Am I right in thinking so as heard? About the numbers. What Typhus has said? Are you have you let them know? Well, I've just said that to go. Yeah. Oh, go I know our heading. Yeah. I just don't like where we're going. Everyone happy? Mm -hmm. Card will go. Ah! So if, um, is there anything else? Are, you happy, are we happy to say that Zozo knows what you say? Yeah, I, yeah. I've, said those, I've said those words um, out loud and everybody bar. Zozo can hear them. would like to say, everybody get ready, join Matron outside. Everybody get ready, we are joining Matron outside and we will follow Typhus's direction. He knows where we're going. He understands the path forward. Wait for me outside. Nice. I wish to speak to Carver. So you guys understand an order from your captain? Make yeah, your way outside? Good. Yeah? Quick question before... Yes? Would I have a spyglass holder already on me? Um, as in, I'm assuming as a pirate I'm assuming and a master I'm, of maps. I'm assuming probably. I would have a spy. That's fine, because as we're walking out, yeah. I'm going to take my old spyglass, pass it to cold, mm -hmm. going, see if you can make use of this, and then put the gold one in its place so it's at least somewhere oh. a bit more protected. Thank you. Rather than mm -hmm. have it... Hard cut to a shot later on of cold using it as a rolling pin. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so Carver will see everybody leave. He will... Um, not return to his pots of what you assumed he was doing, but he will walk over to the room side of the room, start doing something, and go. You're not leaving, Zozo. Um, I'm still right in thinking that Zozo's <coughs> completely without his face on. Yeah, you left your like, helmet and everything on the table. Um, so Carver's gone back to. Just like I know, doing something in a cupboard. What he was doing like the pots or something in the kitchen when you walked yeah, in. Yeah, so Zozo's so, so not going to do anything oppressive or anything that he, he's going to stand where he is. Mm -hmm. um, once again, Zozo, when he takes these stances of, of wanting to convey, he likes to convey a, a a general sense of non-aggression. Mm -hmm. So, as we've sort of established, Zozo's the very honourable, or tries to be as honourable as he can. So once again, he, I mean, he's not wearing any head armour, and his hands again have gone clasped behind his back. He'd like to ask Carver, and he's going to say, My, my dear friend, you have helped us unconsolably in our journey. We did not know what we had, and I have told I have told my crew I will take them on a journey to where they should be. You know, you know better than me as to why 
I look the way I do as to why my eye is different to others. I carry everything with me. But I have nothing to show for it, Carver. Do you have anything I can channel my pain and my suffering into? Because I'm not willing to lose another man beside me. Another member of my crew I do not wish to lose. They are my brothers, my sisters and my family. So when you're speaking, I'm going to assume, like obviously the way you're speaking now with your head moving and that, you're speaking the same way. Yeah. So as you stop speaking and you look up, you'll find Carve LaRue 50 centimetres from you, silently of making his way over. You were passionately making your plea for him and he came over. He will put his hand on your shoulder. I've got the same ring to it, I know, but... No, you're suffering. You know... You know our history together. I will not repeat your name. I apologise for using your name. I understand and I know why your eyes are the way they are. I understand and know probably more than anybody the burden you carry with you cannot stop the cycle of life and death. I cannot make your crew immortal. But maybe one day you will learn to harness that power for your end. I cannot give you anything today. Zozo will place his as he does uh, as it's become common with cold there's this hand that plays on the shoulder mm-hmm. that, that Zozo appreciates as himself as a sign of appreciating someone else. So there's a hand on Zozo's shoulder mm-hmm. and it will reciprocate that with a hand on Carver LaRue. Did you forget his name? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And with that he understands that Carver knows where he is and where he is in his journey. Thank you, my brother. My journey is far from, hopefully, far from finished. Your journey is certainly far from finished. But I hope that your words, your... I don't know. So being a, able to talk to somebody else is much better than being able to talk to myself. I will leave you with this, Sozo. One last word of wisdom before I require payment at least. These men follow you. Not out of fear. Not out of debt. And not out of a sense of should. But they follow you because they choose to. Remember that. And you will be stronger. Now leave. And he will turn to go back to his... Whatever he was doing. His pots, his cooking. His... Out of the crew funds, there are 235 gold, from what I remember, from what I have calculated. Mm-hmm. Zezo would like to leave five of that. In Just a bag. On the table. Just five gold. On the table for... Uh, for as you do, and turn to leave, I guess put your head helmet back on, turn to leave. From where he is at his workstation doing the thing, you will see him wave his hand and the bag will come to him and he will pocket it. And you will leave to join your yeah. crew outside. Did you want to do something outside Carver's? Yes, uh, I'm guessing the others, you were sort of all just out front of. Yeah, so like I've come to join the rest of you guys when you're coming out the door. I've, no- I've actually noticed for once something happening. Well, um, obviously I know that Carver can um, communicate with the animals and that in the area mm-hmm. and from what I know of him they he sort of uses them as his eyes and ears of yeah. 
So while these guys are out front, I'm going to go around the back of... Because it's just the tree, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go around the back of the tree and I'm going to carve in the bark in the back of the tree in Druidic because I mm -hmm. learned it from him and it's a secret language. Um, I'm going to carve a message basically saying um, need help um, send a messenger okay and big sir we can use animal messengers so we can see so he's leaving him a message in the box to say send help and need help send a messenger yeah yeah no problem we can leave that there mm -hmm. you guys head back to town when you have hanging heading back to the city yeah we can see carve aren't we so yeah. yeah. So you head back through the back back through the same forest you went through. You let you know the way back. Like again, two guys have already been to Carver many a time. Um, you guys went that way in, so you know the way back. You head to the top of the uh, cliff again. People have passed. Did the perception check on the sea before? Can you do another perception check on the sea, please? Uh, perception check. Nah. You did it on the jungle. Did didn't you? Jungle, oh, yeah. I did it on the jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was just seven. Yeah. I was going to say seven. Seventeen. Seven. 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 I did it on the jungle. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Because it just leaves him. He was. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I, did no, get a six. I thought. I thought Typhus did one. The... No, he was looking out into the sea. Oh, no, yeah. Oh. I know perception. Oh. Forget what mine is. It's a lovely city, isn't it? Was it not see? Can any of us leaving? Um, Carver's residence make any checks or go first to you can if you want no you, these two have made checks when they've got to the top back to the top of the cliff okay do you want to do anything prior to that so obviously I spoke to Carver you did prior to, to leaving the, uh, Carver gave those I mean, pep talk if you, yeah pep talk for one of a better phrase um is any of us three able to make a check on what's going on in Rockcliffe? As you get to the top of the, the like off the top edge of the cliff. Yeah, we've let, yeah, we, if you want. we've joined these guys. Um, yeah, just go. Can we elect to do one each or help action or? Do what? Yeah, you can. You can do one or you can give someone else the help. Uh, action. Yeah. You wanted a perception, yeah? No, not yet. Oh, I've not decided. Perception. Yeah. I've got plus five. Here. Oh, I've got plus five. So it's up, it's up to us. Watch out. What, 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 what's this? Sorry? Boys. Oh, well, perception. So um, we're rolling one. perception on yeah, plus five eight. for me. Plus five yeah. as well. Come on, we'll roll. Yeah. All roll, see what happens. After no, 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 you go first. Aye. No. That's a ten with bonuses. No. That's a seven. <laughs> no. got <laughs> seven. <laughs> So you guys don't really see anything of port of in, in <coughs> port. You can see people moving around in the city, as, the same as you could when you went up the other way. You're very, very high up. They're not quite ants, but you yeah. are very high up. Natrin, you saw three ships, maybe four, coming towards the town. You've been at Carver's for what an hour? They say it was about twenty minutes in. You've been say two or three hours since you last came this way. These ships are very, very close now. They are. They almost look. In fact, you notice that they're not moving. They are stopped. They are anchored. They have now arrived in the area in which you would need to get on a small boat to come in. Um, You'll notice that they are all identical as well. The three ships are the same. Do you want to go down? Oh, your young man who was told to wait by the lift is still there, if you would like to speak to him. What have those ships been doing since we last passed through here? <laughs> what ships? Those three that are sat in the port. There's about 15 ships in that port. The three identical ships that wasn't here when we left. I'm really sorry sir, but I didn't notice the three identical ships until you've just mentioned them yourself. Have you noticed any people in like uniforms or soldiers or anything since we last came through? 200 foot above the city. You came through the lifts and you oh, I'm, stairs. You asked me to stay at the top of the lifts. Nobody's been through the lifts. Okay. Would, you, would you like to go down the lifts? We would like, we would like you to take us down the lifts. Excellent. You get in the lift. He. It's a lot quicker to go down than it is up, but he does manage to lower it down. Him. So if you can help him, <laughs> yeah. there's just you and Skype. <laughs> you sail down. Turn of losses. It's cold, all right. <laughs> no, I'm just saying his hands are probably like gone. <laughs> yeah. 
he's got like he's he got like some gloves on. But you can see, but even then they're ripped to pieces. There, there's no point in these gloves whatsoever. Yeah, you just as you get to the bottom and the gate opens, as you get off, he just goes. You did say it would be worth it if I waited, sir. Two whole pieces. He horridly takes them out of your hands and puts them into a little pouch that he put the money in from earlier. And he's ever so thankful for your help. If you ever require any more work, come down to our place down on the sea. Come through the sea if we can do some more help or some more work. We've got a vacancy after I kill the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you start heading. He said thank you. He's very grateful for the offer. He's. Um, I'll give him a high five. He gets a high five. He does high five cold back. He's quite a big fan of cold. People in the town tend to. Not Matron, though. Matron goes to the town. No, I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure I press record. Sorry. Yes, I did. Um, and you start making your way back down towards camp? Mm. Towards the boat? Mm. Camp? Mm. As you start making your way back towards camp, you're now getting sort of into the. Towards the town centre, mm -hmm. so to speak. The town centre actually sort of forms onto the where the dock is, the beach area. Um, what you can see now, I'm not going to ask you to check, it's, it's quite obvious, is there is a large crowd gathered around what is a what has been a very crudely put together platform, not quite a stage. You actually at first think it might be part of the dock itself, but it's been added there with three or four people on there in very similar matching outfits. You can't quite tell what the outfits are or like what it is, but you can tell that there's three or four people wearing the same thing. What do you like to do? Everyone looks at me, that's great. Right. <laughs> um, I'm guessing we're assuming from that that I'm at the front. Yes. So there's been a... a I can't screw you back. Oh, is any hangman's noose or? No, nope. just a stage. Just like a stage. A just a stage has been set. Yeah. Okay. Zozo, upon seeing that, will hold, hold both hands out discreetly, not mm -hmm. not overtly, but discreetly, to his crew members behind him, and say, "Just wait, just wait, my brothers. We will see." what time has to bring as you wait and stop them you just from like a, a side building see Calroon mm -hmm. Captain Calroon is here sort of 200 metres away from you 100 feet away from you also looking down at the crowd but at the same time looking round yeah. he sees you and gets your, tries to get your attention and beckons you to come over to him as as a group. Whatever. Zozo knowing Karun, mm -hmm. Zozo will go over. I don't know if, if if that's a check you need for everybody else, but Zozo will go over. I'll just give you I'll, a decision. I will stay. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay to the right hand side of the captain because I am his right hand man. How far away mm. is will we be then from the stage when we go join? Yeah. Gonna say four, five hundred feet. Because okay. it's down in the distance. It's not. Yeah. It's not other side of the town. You can see it. It's it's a bit of a walk, but it's it's basically straight in front of you. But it's good four, five hundred feet. Okay. Calroon will look directly at Zolo, Zozo, and say, "Stay out of that. Do not go down to that beach." Um, as we know, Zozo's face mask is split into two halves. Mm -hmm. um, I like to imagine that the air around Rockcliffe at the moment is this sort of lower than breath temperature to the fact that he can exhale through his nose, mm -hmm. that it comes out of his mouth as physical smoke. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what he'll do. Yeah, yeah. Through his nose, so that smoke physically comes out of his nose too. To, I mean, he's comparing to a what a lobster dog, mm -hmm. so a giant <laughs> elephant right in front of him, and we'll go. <sighs> My dear friend, give me a good reason why. 
he sighs as his old friend is resolute as ever in his um, aims, in his goals, in his methods. Almost, he can almost tell that you're going to go down there, and he is. You're asking him to like physically stop me or tell, like, convince me not to go. Yeah. And he'll say, "Did you think you scared him off in the tavern last night?" Did you think he ran away? It doesn't take a genius to work out three identical ships with identical sails turn up in the city a day after a leader of the Obsidian Federation was threatened on these shores. I told you, the Obsidian Federation has set their sights on Rockcliffe. That seems to be coming to a head now. So, so before you can speak, the air rings with a a bell that seems to come from every angle, just filling the air around you, getting everybody's attention, and a voice follows it. A calm voice, a very British voice, a very resolute voice, There's a, a voice you've never heard, but a very authoritative voice. It says, people of Rockcliffe Bay, I hereby serve you notice that the Obsidian Federation is taking possession of this port. You will all report to us for grading, ranking and being assigned jobs. Anyone who knows the whereabouts of the crew of the New Dawn will be rewarded for coming forward with their information. There's a pause. And he speaks again. Captain Zozo, I speak directly to you. You turn up in a city that has not seen you in months and make threats and assumptions about people that I know and work with. You will not make the same mistake twice. Come forward now hand over the artefact that we know you are in possession of and maybe the future of Rockcliffe City does not need to be so dire. Calroon will look at you and be like, convinced? I'll look at Calroon directly back at him. Old friend. Is there any chance that you can spare me and my brothers some time to get away? He will, for the first time in this encounter, crack a smile and lean back in his, in his stance and say, as only I think Calroon can joke about, the, uh, the famous Captain Zozo running out the back door, it seems. How honourable. Me and mine will run interference. The new dawn has moved. It is to the east of the island. It needed to move when they turned up. Go. We will provide you with your distraction. Zozo, at this point, is going to almost like gesture to the rest of the general, generals that are with him. Matrin, cold, Kyron, fabulous. End of the episode. As a. <laughs> let's go. But we'll unclasp <laughs> his mask for Captain Calhoun. So it's the bottom half of his mask. <laughs> so that he can see it. My dear friend, should I see you again? Do not hesitate to ask for me for a favour. You hand that another mask no. <laughs> that's where we're going to end today's episode thank you every, thank you guys for sitting around and playing D&D &D with me again tonight thank you for you guys at home for taking the time out of it to watch it because things are starting to heat up things are starting to get good we'll be back in a couple of weeks with episode 6 but for now from me and all of the guys see you later thank you everyone okay. <laughs>